You should be very embarrassed to say things like that. That is one of the most insane things I've ever heard. What the f***? We got, is pride still necessary, Austin? Conservative versus liberal gays on this episode of The Middle Ground by Jubilee. Of course pride is necessary. Uh, Number one, like straight people, come participate in pride. You'll have more fun at pride than you will at your, your fucking straight bars. I have nothing to be proud of. I mean, you don't, you just don't go out. I would never, I would never participate in pride. Like, <laughs> like come gay bars, I just think are objectively more fun. Okay. Like well. if you take the, if you take the get, you know, if you're. I mean, I don't know. I just think it's more fun. It's more. It's more accepting. It's we know. More, we know you welcoming. think. We know you think it's more fun. We well, know. I think you. I've just been to too many gay bars at this point. I've been to more gay bars in my lifetime you don't like than the party. Than than you. Have. I went to the Nashville gay bars. Not impressed. <laughs> they were not impressive. All right, let's get started. The gay community is over sexualized. True. Can the agreeers yes. please step forward? Damn, even the lip, even the libtards, they said, the gay yeah. community because, what know, do you think? it's based off of... Would you agree with that? gays, conservatives? Yes, Austin, what do you... Wait, what? You didn't know that there I mean, there gay. are, but, like, God, it's just weird to see them. You know First I mean? of all, much like any marginalized community uh, that is conservative, they're professional, okay? Right. They are, like, professionally gay and conservative. Mm -hmm. But also, brother, gay conservatives... You're in West Hollywood. This is the gay conservative mecca. You have gay conservatives in West Hollywood? Fuck yes, bro. The white, the white cis uh, the gays? What do you mean? I haven't seen, like, they're not out. Or at least they're not out. They 100% exist. They still, they still mask it, and they still hide like they're, you know, Democrats or whatever. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, there's definitely plenty of... Am I chewing into the microphone? Uh, the gays in Equinox and WeHo are almost all conservative. Yeah, gay... Gay conservatives are are not even like a, a unique phenomena. Mm. Well, look, do I think the gay community is over sexualized? Um, Austin, you might be a gay conservative. I, <laughs> look, I I sexualize myself a lot, but like I do think I, this is what I think. I don't think there's anything wrong with being sexual, overtly sexual at that. But I do think that there sh there there needs to be more. You're saying keep um, it in the bedroom. No, no, no. Don't keep it in the bedroom. I don't I don't think it's too much. I just think maybe we should elevate more stories of love and showing that like you said keep it in the bedroom, F word. No, like That's what he we said. should elevate more stories of love and romance and things like that because, you know, it's deeper than just sex sometimes. But that being said, like I don't think that being too sexual is a bad thing. Our sexual attraction, it has a very easy time going into a space that's all about sex to me being they didn't have to put conservative under clarkson his name is clarkson and he looks like he looks the way he looks like we know he's conservative gay is a lot more than who i sleep with you know just like we it, know the liberals are also liberals like there's a there is a look mm. You know, it's, he looks it's an experience from when I grew up. <laughs> yeah. The movement used to be about That's love, take, yeah. but then you go to a pride parade now and you're seeing old men with their genitals out. Wait, I think hold everybody on. has Wait a right. fucking second. They've always had their genitals out, right? There is. I don't know if there's ever been a moment where. Well, I've never seen somebody's genitals out, but like, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we've always been sexy at pride. Like, it's right. is not that always been the case? Yeah, the, this immediately they hit like, the kink at pride discourse, which is so fucking tired and old and boring and annoying. Um, log cabin Republicans have mass migrated to Andrew Yang's campaign staff and RFKs as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting into cat. I'm getting into topics that I'm, I'm not equipped to discuss. Mm. Right. To like express their sexuality in, in the ways that they do it. So on those grounds, I'm not like offended by these old people, like right. <laughs> doing what I they're do doing, what do. but I do agree with that. I think like one of the biggest challenges when I was coming out to my dad, who's Muslim, it was like my sexuality being gay isn't just about my sexual lust for bro you you kept that ranch out of that salad for approximately five minutes no i know you, but I, but, I, but, I didn't, but see no this is the key and i want to i want to this is this is a lesson uh -huh. i want to teach people uh -huh, go ahead look you can have a little ranch but look how much is left in this in this container there's a lot of ranch there's a lot of ranch left. A, lot of That's ranch. a lot of ranch and most people would pour the whole thing i only poured about a quarter legalize of it, it right legalize it so i'm saying all right let's keep going other men it's more about the spiritual connections the in-depth things like me as a whole complex person i do think that our experiences and our existence has kind of been trivialized by the over sexualizations i don't think it's inherently an evil but and the over sexualization is apparent in the apps that we can get i mean you can literally have sex on demand or you could <laughs> 
This guy's a conservative. Get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> Look at this. My man is out of control with this fit, okay? Find God damn, Mario. Wherever you want. Certain businesses are actually keeping doors open because men are having sexual relations in the bathrooms, and that's inappropriate. I mean, we want our privacy too, just like women, and now we can't even have our privacy because a small sect of men ruin it for us. Yeah, and that was really frustrating too. When I came out the closet, it was like I had this innate pressure, like, oh, I have to download Grinder. I have to be super yeah. sexualized, and that's- <laughs> Oh, come on. You don't have to grow up. Oh. <laughs> He's like, oh no, why? Dude, this guy is literally doing the classic onion bit of like, why are all these homosexuals sucking my cock all the time? <laughs> but he's literally doing it as a out and about gay conservative. <laughs> like he took it one step further. He's like, man, I hate how I just, oh, I came out and then I was pressured to fucking download Grinder, And I was just like constantly sucking and fucking. I hate it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Just hold off, man, you know? It's really bad on our youth because although I mean, everyone has sex, I get that, but why is it that our community is so hyper-focused on that? I haven't attended many Pride events because of that. I have an answer for it. No. Men. Yeah. That's it. Because you're men who want to fuck men. Oh. That's, that's kind of... man, baby. That's it. That's literally it. There is no other... It's testosterone. It's because you're both men. That's it. That That is the whole point, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want a nut, you, you speak the language, everybody knows, okay? Nut and knees. Everybody knows how to speak it. <laughs> All men know. <laughs> so if it's a men-on-men -men situation, it's just like, I want a nut. And then the other dude goes, I want a nut too. And then boom. The reason I was mm -hmm. able to go to Portugal and there was this queer retreat. And it was like the first time I felt like safe and secure as a queer person because it wasn't sexual. And I could have this, these relationships with queer men, but there is no expectation to be sexual. Okay, yeah, I see it at the okay, I just, I fundamentally, there, there are many places that you can find a non-sexual queer gathering, okay? This is so funny. This is funny because like a lot of the things that um, the, the gay conservatives are saying... Mm -hmm. are like memes in the gay community where like they would agree with it ironically mm -hmm. but when they're saying it they mean it with like all sincerity mm -hmm. but i mean i guess like it's still it's still cynical like there's no there's no instance where like a public conservative is going to especially one from a marginalized background is going to say shit without like you know trying to appeal to the broader conservative masses yeah. gay club you you're getting grabbed you're, you are you're getting you high. You're it, it's funny though because like uh -huh. you love going to the abbey and i've always told you like like, I'm down to go to like like a more upscale uh, gay establishment. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fucking go to the Abbey because it's like it gets a little hectic. You know what I mean? Like I want to go to like a nice place. I want to go to a nice place. It's like a lounge or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's also uh, gay. You, you know? Want, you want to go to a gay lounge? Yeah, I'm down to I'm down to go to like a like a more quiet place. Is what I mean. I don't want to go to the Abbey. It's too fucking high intensity. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's a lot. Wait, I thought the Abbey was fancy. Fuck no. <laughs> None of the none of the major WeHo bars are upscale. <laughs> yeah, every club on Santa Monica Boulevard is cursed, one hundred percent. Getting to be sexual up at clubs. I mean, I avoid them at all costs at this point. Dang, what would Mill Brown be without you, Rogany? But you know, it's not just me; it's a team effort too. Cheers to that. <laughs> Which is why we want to thank Milano for sponsoring this mix. Do have in the worst it so we're. I think it's easy to generalize our communities. You perked up real quick, motherfucker. What? You saw this guy and you're like, what, what's going no, on? No, 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 no. I was because why we're in it, so we're the focused the on it. But if you look at the straight community, I think they're doing a lot of what we're doing, especially now Bear with more sexual liberation becoming a thing for them and their community. I also think that we have to remember, like, we've only been legal, as in, like, decriminalized in our sex for 20 years this year. That's crazy. Mm. Every year up until 20 years ago, like there's going to be an explosion of people wanting to embrace their sexual liberation. Mm -hmm. And then you look at things like the AIDS epidemic in the 80s, like that took away so many people and it made us afraid to have sex. So this, in my opinion. Yeah, they, they stay back if they don't agree with the test, uh, oh. the sentiment. It's a way for us to overcome stuff. And we definitely need to find a better. Hassan deflecting his attraction to Barrett on Austin. I literally immediately said Barrett is hot. When have I never, <laughs> when have I shied away from saying a, a, a dude is attractive? You know, balance. the basis for making us illegal has always been based on sex. Right. And so being openly sexual in any way at all whatsoever is inherently a protest, inherently subversive. Yes. I mean, there are sexual things that happen in public that I'm sometimes uncomfortable with. But sure, me that doesn't mean that all the things we see and all the things our friends see represent the majority of experiences. A huge portion of LGBTQ people exist in zero public LGBTQ spaces. I think you draw the line of you do this in the comfort of your home and you can show affection in public. I don't know if we need to be 
like indecent in public. I don't know if that- Man, what, what the why, fuck? Why not? This are, first of all, this argument is so fucking stupid because like this is the classic trope stereotyping that marginalized communities are hit with all the fucking time that you never see from the broader masses. Heteronormativity is the norm. Like we live in a heteronormative society. So when straight people are indecent in public, Lauren Boebert, for example, is like literally something we just talked about. It's not seen as like grooming, indecent, hypersexual. It's just you're on a fucking date and you were copping a feel. Okay. But when gay men do it, it's like, oh my God, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. This is there's children present. What the fuck is going on? That's the major difference. Straight people are allowed to push the boundaries because when they push the boundaries, okay, and go even way beyond what Lauren Boebert was doing, okay, when straight people do that, it's never considered uh, uh, a, a, a stain on the entire straight community because that would be ridiculous as the overwhelming majority of people in society. So everybody has the understanding that like, oh, this is just this individual person behaving out of pocket, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. But when gay men do it, it's like, no, they're all, uh, they're all doing it. They're all crazy sex perverts, which is the reason why this prompt in and of itself is one that I do not agree with. It's just that no matter what happens, it's because gay men are specifically seen that way uh, and, and it's a very common stereotyping and it's outside of the norm. Like homosexuality is considered outside of heteronormativity, which is precisely the reason why when gay men do something inherently sexual, then it's seen as something that is significantly, you know, more in your face and, and more in a, more offensive than, uh, than when heteronormative uh, straight people do it. That would be considered. How do you define indecent? I've been like in a, when I, I'm in a 20 year relationship, a 20 year monogamous relationship with my husband. And I say husband, even though we're not married, um, but we're not groping each other. <laughs> Mario, Mario's like, <laughs> he's not getting married because he hates Obergefell. He's like, <laughs> As a conservative gay man, <laughs> I think marriage should be between a man and a woman, which is why I'm not getting married. Wait, by the way, I'm saying that jokingly. If he does legitimately fucking say that, I'm going to lose my mind, okay? <laughs> in public. We can pack, we, we joke around. When we walk into a room, they know we're together. Because we just, hands? we give, yes, absolutely. We hold, we show extra affection at home in the privacy of our home or okay. in the privacy of friends' homes because we feel comfortable in that. And that, you know that what that though is your specific no, preference for public affection. There are a million rom-coms out there for hetero with heterosexual people yes. and a fun, funny thing seen in that movie Correct. is straight people having sex in some public space. Correct. Uh, this is a- I still don't think that's appropriate. I don't straight necessarily people, do either. People okay. I don't necessarily do either. This isn't a problem that exists, or not even a problem. This isn't something that exists ex exclusively in um, homosexual relationships. Heterosexual couples express themselves in a variety of different ways in public. Um, exactly. I, I go to the Abbey, uh, I frequent the Abbey. And I'll be honest, like, if I just think about it right now, just, like, looking at a bunch of couples around, like, you don't really see that that often. Like, yeah, people are like, a little kiss, holding hands, just like you would see for straight couples. It's not like you're seeing, you go to a gay bar and they're just gay couples that are just fucking tongue down each other's throats. And, and, and for the record, like, you know, club, when, when you're clubbing, like, at night and everything like that, things get a little wild on the dance floor and people are making out and everything like that, which is what you would see at a straight club, too. Like, no different. Like, gr people are grabbing ass and making out and... You know, do, nothing you see is is any different. It just they ha so happen to be gay. Like it's not a it's it's it, it's it's not something that exclusively happens in the gay community. It's normal and natural and beautiful. Thank you, Austin. You're saying we're talking about personal I think preferences. I know, but yeah. I think a lot of times in this, and I don't disagree with what you guys said, no, but a lot no, of no. times what I'll hear is like, well, the straight people do this. And I always grew up saying, I clean my house before I tell somebody else to clean theirs. I am not straight. Right. Therefore, if straight people are doing something wrong and gay people are doing something wrong, I'm going to address the gay people that are doing something but wrong. And not the, like, like, the people who yeah. have been setting the stage for all of us to like follow suit with. You know, like we live in a heteronormative culture, like right. everything that we see is based off of the way that they exist. The whole idea of over-sexualization and things like that, I think the danger in it is that for so long it's been weaponized against us. So we're always kind of like under this magnifying glass of like, oh, well, can I hold hands? Can I kiss this person? And then, you know, I don't think we necessarily have to like mimic quote unquote bad behavior simply because that was what was served to us. I don't know if all these gay conservatives are actually media people because some of them do seem genuine. Pride is still necessary.
I mean, that's... Well, yeah, I think pride's necessary. It's ridiculous to say it's not. It's not like... Dude, this is so dumb. First of all, even if, like, all matter of, of issues that pertain to the gay community and, like, the LGBT community as a whole was, like, completely solved, right? There was no transphobia. There was no homophobia. There was no... There was no, like, attacking queer people on the basis of their sexuality, gender expression, yada, yada. Even then, it would be a celebration of of the historic achievements like getting to that point mm -hmm. right because that's not what it was like in contemporary western society for quite some time so there is no moment in time when like pride becomes unnecessary okay like there's just no moment there's no moment in time where that becomes unnecessary right it's idiotic to to make that statement but we are also not uh, in a time men spanning homosexuality to a gay man the Hassan is. I'm gonna fucking. Is, is, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna Hassan lose my is mind. more educated in gay issues than I am. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't need to. I don't need to suck a cock to, gonna, to know say, what like, I'm talking about. Okay. I was like, he. When we're talking about eating ass or something like that, like man ass or something like that, or sucking dick. Like maybe I could advise a little bit more, but like these are these are issues that Hassan has studied for years. Yeah. Um. So pride is pride is always going to be a necessity, even if it's like. Uh, even if it's not immediately addressing like issues that uh, the LGBT community are facing, but we also do live at a time where the LGBT com uh, community is definitely fucking under attack. Okay, like it, it's it's ridiculous to uh, it's ridiculous to say like nah, everyone everything is so great for everybody in the in the queer community. Like things are awesome. It's like there's like fifty different fucking pieces of uh, legislation passed in state legislatures around the country that specifically carve out uh, like anti-trans and sometimes even anti-gay legislation. It's so fucking stupid to make it seem like it's, it's a, uh, we've completely moved beyond. We're gender abolitionists now. Okay. We're not living in that world at all. Sorry, but we need a PR revamp. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we need a rebrand. Uh, I take a lot of issues with what I see at Pride Parades now, uh, just because, you know, as we discussed previously, I think that it, it's a little bit over-sexualized. We're celebrating, essentially, sex rather than love, and we have people running around riding bikes with their balls out in front of kids, and... It's always, like, hyper-focusing on, like, a bunch of random people that are doing not even... The balls, uh, the, the, the fucking nudist uh, bike ride or whatever. I was going to say, they have a, they have a, Portland has a naked bike ride every year. Yeah, no, that's what it is. Or, or they no, go. that's what they're talking about. Yeah, and it has nothing not, to do with that, pride. That's not pride. Exactly. That's Those new, guys are. That's the naked bike ride in Portland where just grown-ass men and women drive around the yeah, city naked. Which is, which is odd. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like it. It's very you know? Portland. I, I get it. They're not celebrating shit. <laughs> I get it. I, I think it's weird, but like also at the same time, one, it's not fucking gay pride. It's like just nudists in Portland. Yeah, nobody okay. says shit about it. Seattle does it as well. It's like an, it's a whole event about being naked and nobody says anything about it. Yeah, but they always turn around and they're like, uh huh, actually, this is like gay pride and there's children present or whatever the fuck. And it's like, yeah, even if it was literally like we're doing this for for we're doing gay biking okay which biking is pretty gay in general okay what are you fucking sitting on almost a penis like uh, for extended periods of time like pretty gay okay have you ever seen a bike seat looks like a penis with balls okay but like even if it was for some gay shit for some gay reason okay that's like one singular instance it's not like this is you as a gay man why the fuck are you rushing to like Make this the entire community. Like, you are so desperate to be welcomed into conservative circles that you are literally doing the bidding of homophobe, okay? Like, why, why are you doing that? Your very existence as a gay conservative betrays the argument that you are trying to make that, like, yeah, no, it's all about, like, being gay. Homosexuality is now all about fucking being gay and naked in public as an old man, you know? It's stupid.
for me. Where are you seeing this? Yeah, what I'm parts are you going to? Um, New everywhere. York City and Seattle, both of those had naked people walking the streets. San walking San Francisco. Francisco. One of them was on a bike. I saw the video of him on a bike. I didn't want to I would see never it have my balls out on a bike. That sounds dangerous. It, well, no, me either. It's right. dangerous. Me either, but, but it it's, a, it's the fact exists. that it is allowed because we have this shield of it's pride, don't mess with gay people because of our history, which is, is granted. I mean, but people are afraid to look at our culture and say, that's not acceptable. Around EU, I've been on many cities' pride parades and nothing is sexual really like at all yeah it's not like that even in fucking uh many pride uh parades around the country obviously if you go to weho yeah people are getting a little nutty with it especially at night okay maybe not during the day but certainly a fucking night but ultimately it is <coughs> in some ways it is no different than uh uh you know going to fucking new louisiana on fat tuesday okay that's it. It's the same principle. Yeah, it's what like about Mardi Gras when dicks yeah, are flying it's, out. It's fucking trashy. Well, dicks are flying out at Mardi Gras too, but it's in a it, it is in a straight setting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it don't matter, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's in a setting that isn't exclusively a gay one. Why are we talking about kink at Mardi Gras? People only see that as like a singular instance of people being trashy, okay, and uh, and and never see it as a stain on the entire het. Mm -hmm. cis head population mm -hmm. yeah i don't like it i don't like uh uh you know i, I don't like the the <laughs> nightlife in uh uh we hope proper uh during you know pride month or uh during the pride parade okay but i don't like the fucking the nola situation <coughs> either i don't like mardi gras either it's just not for me but i would never make the assertion the false assertion that this is like how every straight person behaves or this is how every gay person behaves. It's acceptable, stupid. because if straight people were walking around doing that, it would be a totally different discussion. I don't they think that's are. the majority of the issue, though. I mean, the reality is that being visible, period, is vital. Absolutely. We, are, we, we can be we, none of us will, yeah, None of us will be alive to see the day when heterosexual people and homosexual people have equal agency in what's allowed and what's not allowed in the public space. Uh, me personally, I actually think Pride is uh, very necessary. I love it. I wouldn't say Pride parades. I right. feel like um, you guys are yeah. leaning towards like the parades itself. Mm -hmm. Pride is like liberation, you know. Just proud of I, who you are. And yes, yourself, and accepting just, yourself. yeah, accepting yourself mm -hmm. and having the people around you in your circle really accept you. It really tells the future generation, like not only is it okay, but look how far we've come. Yeah. At 2011, you know, the don't ask, don't tell policy was abolished. I'm in the military and had that not been abolished, I would not be able to be, you know, a minority be openly gay and still be able to serve my country. Yeah, and I want to just say thank you for your service <laughs> no, before you, I move man. on. And, and that's a <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, yes. He's like, oh. Hey, yeah. look, I'll be honest. I've thanked people for their service. Yeah, because you're a conservative gay. No, I'm you're not. literally, you're, you're like, wearing camo right now. Where'd yeah. you get these pants from? Uh, I got them at the mall in Nashville. Okay. Look, I've been hanging around some. Trendy gays, okay? Uh, have they've you? They've been inspiring me to dress a little differently. Okay, I mean, I'm surprised that you're actually finally yeah. wearing different pants, and they're not, like, super tight, so yeah. I'm, he, I'm here for he, it. Yeah, yep. Anyway. A prime example of the pride that I would love to attend is someone who highlights service members, gay service members, gay CEOs, people who are successful. <laughs> are oh, my God. This is so... This is literally just, like... Dude, I, I, love, I love conservative monoculture because, like... He he's just saying the dumbest shit. But like this is oh why don't we why don't we highlight gay CEOs? But but the thing is, like, is who like, cares? Being sexual and highlighting gay CEOs aren't mutually exclusive. You can do both at the same time. Yeah, right. You don't have to stop being sexual to highlight successful gay men. And they do and that. Women. Pride is literally the most like pro corporate bullshit whitewash nonsense anyway. <laughs> they literally have Lockheed Martin f uh, parades, man. The fuck are we talking about? Hello, the Navy exists, okay? America's been doing gay imperialism for a very long time. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Gay <Christ>. imperialism. <laughs> like, it's so fucking stupid. Wait, is it to society. Tim Cook is celebrating. Yeah. Oh. Who you are, love who you are. Well, if they would have talked about it more, pride you know I mean? is no longer about <laughs> being overly promiscuous because we're not allowed to. We don't need to overcorrect to the point that we start to get backlash. We need to correct our PR. I still think we're looking at a small group of the people. What does that he are think? Like, like, small said, group, like, but saw, they speak the loudest. No, but they don't always. You said you saw two people naked. Like from no, those two separate instances of groups of people who were naked. Out of hundreds of thousands. Exactly. Right. exactly. Yeah, I hate this because like now I have to argue with like something that you saw. Okay, 
This is what like conservative conversations devolve into. By the way, Barry's doing an incredible job. Okay. Dismissing that by being like, oh, so you saw a naked person? Great. You know? Cool. Out of hundreds of thousands of people, like, shut the fuck up. It's so stupid. It's like, no, I saw a video. It's like, why am I debating a video you watched? Okay. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Exactly. around the world and but like that you were gets saying, highlighted looking at specific things with a level of shame and then have to look at like where are we shameful within ourselves and why is that something that we should be ashamed of in general like why is nudity shameful in general i agree with you about nudity itself is not sexual i don't think so because i have been in new places and it's not sexual <laughs> but Ooh, zane is a freak freak yeah look at him nudity itself is not like sexual. when you make it sexual that's the problem mm -hmm. it can be indecent exposure at some of these things and pride needs to not be complacent and address it this should be interesting. <laughs> oh, Mario. Yes, heels. Come on. I know. I know. I'm alone on this one. But the reason I'm alone on this one is because I or Bro, <laughs> Mario's got the fucking Navi uh, uh, fit, dude. It's pretty sick. Like, he looks like he's out of the Avatar. <laughs> it is funny when, like, someone is, like, the stereotypical, like, obnoxious peacocking gay who then is, like, conservative at the same yeah, time. He's the reason we need pride still. <laughs> he's just like, you know, like, you're so loud, brother. What like, are you talking about? We need pride so we can continue to, like, have you do what you do without getting discriminated against. <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It is Horizon Zero Dawn. No, literally. Oh, my God. I just realized you're not even wrong. <laughs> Bro, look at this. Do we have a like a side? Uh, like I wish we could. I wish I could so show it from the side. Like it's just like I just want to point something out here, Mario. I don't know if you know this, but like the dudes who you are aligning with think your very existence of being like a loud gay guy who dresses like this is the same kind of like moral degeneracy that you think you're signaling. Uh, you're you you think you're like carving out by saying like pride is not necessary anymore. Okay. It's so dumb. Like, those guys that uh, think, like, pride is not necessary anymore or just, like, in general, homosexuality is a sin or whatever, they think you're, you looking like this alone is just, like, you looking like this alone is, like, all right, nope, get him out of here. What the fuck's going on? Organized one of the most successful prides in my community in 2016. I invited groups that were outside the norm, like the <laughs> NRA and the local GOP, including oh, the Democrats. Because oh, he, for me, it was important that this event oh, he, he the planned the pride finale more than like, just say we are a sexual <laughs> beat. We wanted yeah. to like, that bro, was it. He, he he invited everybody to have one final pride. Bro, he did. Yeah, he did the red wedding. <laughs> he was like, I'm I'm this pride. We're bringing homos and homophobes <laughs> together. Okay, and then the homophobes are gonna kill you guys yeah. why would you the nra dude they came they came geared up with their weapons to just like kill people <laughs> yeah he, he just he wanted to do the gay holocaust <laughs> to educate the people i was told i was never allowed to help them again because how dare i invite a hate group like the nra when all i wanted to do was arm lgbt people and educate them on how to protect themselves because as you guys said there are those people who would God, he's so anno i hate him i hate him he's like he's such a like he knows exactly what he's doing you know what i mean he's like the typical like annoying conservative guy who straight up is like completely aware of what they're doing they're doing this specifically so that they'll get a reaction and then go oh look at this reaction it's so crazy it's like bro you did that on purpose like fuck fucking uh protect them from who is a great question it's like protect them from the nra it would hurt us i live in a very very red community okay mike garcia is my representative I'm and Santa i Clarita. yeah it's Santa, yeah, Santa Clarita. but <laughs> i dress like this to galas big Government galas, realtor galas. No one has said anything to me. And in fact... Oh, okay. Then they're not homophobic. Yeah, they must it. be. Yeah. They must be totally cool with that. I just don't understand how you are like so close in proximity to being hate crimed and you just still uh, like regularly are just like, well, they're not hate criming me, so it doesn't exist. All I get is positive uh, affirmation that, hey, you're living your best life. And I say it's not really <laughs> necessary because I can walk down my street in heels and braids. In and California. Oh, hell yeah, you are no. so privileged in that yeah. way. In yeah. Republican a controlled California. Oh, yes. A recent poll of Californians found that 35% of Californians 
feel that homosexuality should be discouraged. I've done this so in Michigan. You, you're in LA I've done this in Michigan. I've done this in Tennessee. I've done this oh. in Missouri. Yeah, and I've done this in all those states. Yes, I have. Yes, yes, like I you're going to be walking down a street dude, that's in, so in Oklahoma like in heels and looking like that, and they're going to go, man, you're living your best life. Yeah. You keep it up, queer. <laughs> you're living your best life, and I'm so happy for you. That's not happening. Dude, the funniest part about this is that like like he's in the gays against groomers uh uh coalition, I guess, which is like a like an anti-trans hate group. Uh -huh. Predominantly comprised of straight people, by the way. But he's like I guess the gay face for it. And what's ironic about it is that like bitch you're wearing heels right now. Like what do you mean? Those like actually genuinely legitimately transphobic, homophobic people would just shoot you in the back of the fucking head. Like what what are you talking about? <coughs> Like, they're not doing that to you in, uh, I guess you got lucky in all these, like, red places or whatever. But ultimately, it's not even just about that. Like, it's not even just about, like, direct acts of violence, which does occur. But it's not necessarily just about direct acts of violence. It's indirect discrimination that exists all the time. It's, it's uh, you know, the, the lack, the, like, not feeling secure and safe everywhere. Like... It's all this shit that's happening to most normal people that have to live in these places every day uh, and not just, like, become a tourist in a protected, uh, you know, GOP event or whatever the fuck where you're, like, the gay token, so they're letting you exist. Um, it's just, it goes beyond that. But the irony, of course, is that, like, you can't, you can't, on the one hand, say, like, oh, trans people should not exist or whatever the fuck as a gay man and wear goddamn heels, you know what I mean? Like, what? <laughs> like, you're, you are also destroying gender norms, okay? The types of gender norms that, like, most people would not be comfortable destroying, like, the, your allies, okay? It's crazy. I've had it's absolutely red, no issues. I walked red. into a backwoods bar in the middle of Nashville where it was a double wide that had been converted to a bar and it was one of those records what, scratched. What does your husband look like? My husband is six foot four and he's And there's your protection. Man. That's not my protection. That I walk in that community dressed just like this in these heels and not only do I not get hate, my husband gets more business. I mean, I'm so happy for you that this is true for you. I really am. Yeah, totally. But the reality yeah. is that you represent a small minority of LGBTQ people and how they actually experience life in America. To your like sense of freedom, which is so admirable, I think that those things are built on blocks of people who probably did feel that pride was necessary. So it's a good point. Oh, this is a great point. Doesn't feel pride is needed anymore, but instantly had a list of unsafe areas he goes to. It's like it's like why did you bring up Tennessee immediately? You know what I mean? Why did you bring up Missouri? So what's going on to to sh to tell everybody how safe you felt in those places? Why didn't you just talk about fucking California? You know. <laughs> like it's just also Nashville saying backwoods about Nashville is pretty funny but you know the bar he's talking about is a hipster bar in Nashville yeah but even there he felt an he air a, he of a, he was at play in Nashville <laughs> it's funny to it, it's funny to be like uh, there was an air of like tension that he expected at the very least why did you expect that it's a beautiful thing that we can have the freedom to you know change our mind admire that yeah. And, yeah and I think we all want everyone to feel the way that you feel like you don't right. need it but that's just not the case my name is John, and I am a Patreon member who is asked to read you this next prompt. The LGB oh, should no. be separated from the TQIA+. Uh -oh. oh, God, well. Uh-oh. Oh, here come all the conservatives. <laughs> here they come. <clears throat> oh, shit. Wait, what? Saying they should be separated. Why did... Wait, what is happening? Saying that one oh. is, you know, less important. What? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I do want to start with that. But I do think that the LGB is very specific, rooted in science. It's very clear as day. Um, you have lesbian, gay, and bi. Main difference. Dude, you can't. That's so funny. Dude, when a gay person says Ugh. the LGB is rooted in science, Ugh. it's such a funny... In order to discriminate against the, the T's and the Q's, right? It's like, brother, what, what year? Okay, science according to which year? What do you mean rooted in science? Like this was this was considered a mental disorder not that fucking long ago. Okay, what are you talking about? <laughs> Rooted in science. You, it's so funny to just. It's so funny to to look at that. Like stand on the progress that other queer people have made for him, and just stand on top of it to be like, all right, no more, and like use the exact same terminology that people who would want to kill him 
used back when, you know, uh, uh, for uh, other gay people and other queer people were fighting for equality and rights. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 50 years ago, they would have lobotomized you in, in the scientific institutions for homosexuality. Straight and LGB is science. All other sexual preference is magic. Mm. Between male and female, we all know what that is. The reason why I stepped forward with hesitation was because I think that there are such lived differences and experiences that we experience. Although collectively, I think that we all know the collective experience of being a sexual deviant. There just is a difference in lived experience that I think is, is important to talk about and acknowledge, and that's my grounds for agreeing with perhaps a separation. My, mine is very different. Uh, to be clear, the science is very solid on uh, identities other than gender assigned at birth being valid. Science is very clear, robust, there is no question that it's legit. We, as cisgender people, do a really bad job of standing up for people who aren't cisgender. I call out the fact that cisgender queer people are treated differently than non-cisgender queer people, and until we do better, we don't deserve to have the letters be together. Oh, shit. I mean, he... He pulled a pa fast one, but like that was quick. No solidarity. No yeah, solidarity is the way to go. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Like I, I, I see what own. he's saying. I see what he's saying, but it's like, yeah, no, it's not. It, like I get what he was trying to do. <laughs> he tried to flip it. Yeah, no, he, he's just like you don't have to stand up for. We that, don't though. deserve them. Better ground. <laughs> So I mean I I kind of I agree with what you're yeah, saying, but I think he's in general, so woke. This conversation he went to the right. Can become very hostile because it it seems like you know I I'm like oh I don't want you to be a part like I don't want you to be my friend I don't want, I don't want to be, be with you be next to you be seen with you and that's not the case. One is an identity, and one is a sexuality, and that's just the simple dif difference between the two. Eventually, as both groups are fighting for their own personal interests, those are yeah. But it's it's beyond the boundaries of uh, heteronormativity. That's it. You know what I mean? That's it. So, uh, originally it was grouped up under sexuality regardless, okay? The historical oppression that trans people have faced has been on uh, the, the same boundaries that uh, gay people have uh, uh, faced oppression. That's it. That's the reason why it is grouped together, because it is outside of what is considered normal. That's it. Not heteronormativity. You can be a heterosexual trans person, but it doesn't matter because society doesn't view you as such. It, they, they group you uh, when they are engaging in the act of oppression. You know? They're going to not work cohesively. So one is going to be quieter and one is going to get taken advantage of, et cetera. And it's not that we can't support the TQ+. Right. I just think that they're two vastly different things. I think that you, you oversimplify identity versus sexuality, though, because there are tons of men who identify as straight who have, on occasion, with regularity, once in their life, sex with men, which is why... Goodbye. I think once with men, sure, yeah. experience, but, experiment. So it, he said, you suck one dick. He said, you suck one dick, you're a dick sucker. <laughs> He's like, nope, you suck one cock, dude. It's, it's fair play, okay? <laughs> the one drop rule for cock <laughs> for cum uh the one dick rule okay it's over it's done think, but i think if there is a guy that's identifying as straight that sometimes dabbles with men he might you're, identify as straight but he's so, not <laughs> so two things first of all there are lots of gay men that we are allowed that we can call gay all day and all night that occasionally have sex with women and we don't question whether they're or not bi. they're gay they're bi. but are you entitled to okay. titling this is a funny, this is a funny take because like first they said it, it, the science is clear on this and now they're like showing that it, it definitely isn't. <laughs> but also simultaneously, this argument is pretty funny because you could argue it from both ends. <laughs> Austin, why haven't you said anything? Uh, what? Right, come on, go ahead, dude. Give us a, give us some little, give us a little bi erasure maybe or, uh, or, or bi positivity, bi visibility. What, what about it? I don't know. You you're tapped out. You're not. No no no. I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay. I'm listening. I'm listening. Oh, okay. I promise. I, I just got a someone else. Is. To... Is, is that is that up to you? The the title is an objective fact. If yeah. you sleep with men and women, then you are bi. What if someone sexuality you were, I don't is on a spectrum yeah. and it's incredibly complex? Incredibly it's naturally complex. And it's, it's natural, incredibly natural. And it's everybody incredibly on that spectrum is natural and beautiful, and they're having a, a human experience. Except for conservatives. People are so obsessed with giving folks. Except for conservatives, they're not natural, nor are they beautiful. 
people that identify as gay, it's very normal and natural to sometimes maybe there will be certain gay men that have some attraction to women on occasion, once every 10 years maybe. Um, I don't know. Just it, Labels are, labels are uh, uh, as human beings, are attempt at describing a very complex <laughs> feelings and emotions. No such thing as being gay. It's just a disease of the mind and soul, a deception from Satan and against normal human nature. Gay people need free healthcare treatment and therapy and need to pray and repent to God and become normal again. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Just it's, the truth. Yeah. I love that. He's just, he's presenting just the truth to us. Well, at least, at least I like the socialized medicine part. That's yeah. He's like, he, he's like, he's like, yeah, I, I am, a, <laughs> I am a homophobic <laughs> Christian yeah. Uh, socialist. <laughs> we need we need free health care for homo or, or to, for homosexuals to cure them from their homosexuality. Uh, yeah, but, but I love not that. not for those who need insulin. Yeah, gay people have been gay people has been considered more. Dude, only for I the love gays. I love when people say being homosexual is not natural. It's like, bro, <laughs> have you seen nature? Nature is more trans and more gay than your mind could ever fucking comprehend, okay? Not only is uh, the entirety of humanity, the human existence, defying nature in general, that's like what, that's kind of what we do, so the uh, uh, appeal to nature is a, uh, is always going to be a silly argument regardless, but literally, if you were to look at nature, nature is so fucking gay. It's so gay. It's more... It's more natural to be gay. If you were to look at nature, you'd be like, wow, holy shit. It's weird that people even breed. Yeah, why like, do you think the G-spot's where it's at? Like, it's it's literally it, it's literally weirder that people just, like, that have... by design. Yeah, people, people having straight sex for any other purpose outside of, like, uh, reproduction would, would come across as unnatural to you, okay? If you looked at fucking... Uh, if you looked at nature... If you don't agree, that's fine. But the fact is, you sleep with men and women, so you're bi. Flat out. Can we not talk about who we're having sex with? Just for this problem. Because a lot of what's in the media today is sensationalized content about, you know, targeting children. Some of it, a lot of it is valid, and some of it is not. But a lot of times, it's gay men that are doing it, and trans people are getting blamed for it when it's really gay. This guy, this guy's really interesting because, like... He's saying that, like, in order to protect trans people, we need to separate our separate our fucking devious, degenerate ass gay men, <laughs> which is pretty funny. He's literally saying that, like, trans people are being attacked unjustifiably because of actions that we freak ass gay men are engaging in. <laughs> this is a brand new sentence. I have not heard of this before. I love that. Gay men in drag, right. and because the letters are together. People don't know the difference. And even when I first started like coming out, the first thing that one somebody said to me mm -hmm. was, Are you gonna transition into a woman? And I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. That has nothing to do with with my sexuality. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but because they're together from an outsider's point of view, optically, I think if we're if our goal is to educate the populace on who we are, then we need to make a more clear distinction between LGB and TQ plus. Well, I don't disagree. I think it's just important that if we do that we don't erase any of the validity of the people who Absolutely. are in the group we're not a part of. And yeah, I think it's silly as fuck to, to destroy solidarity and like, uh, you know, excise, self-excise like a group of individuals who, by the way, even on the sexuality front, more often than not, also still are a part of like the L and the G and the B, right? Because like, so what do you do? <laughs> Sorry, you're only allowed to be a par part of this if you're like a trans man who fucks men. You can't be a part of this uh, if you are a trans man who fucks uh, uh, women. Like, is that what we're doing? Like, so stupid. Also, right, right. What, I, what, I'm, what I wonder about in this context is, some people are born intersex, so they have sexual organs of both genders. Right. How do we identify under the, circum under the criteria you guys have identified, how would we label them? Intersex. Because if they have both, and they have sex with only one gender, what are they? You know, it's such a rare case. I'm not but saying it does I don't exist. exist. I, know, I don't think does. the exception makes the rule. Wait, what do you mean? That's not a. That's not that rare at all. That's so stupid. When people are like, "That's such a rare case." It's like, first of all, you can't make the argument that something is natural and then and then literally just like hand wave away a, a natural phenomena. Okay, and and also the number of intersex people is not 
all that rare. I mean, there's a larger number of intersex people on the planet than there are Jewish people across the board internationally. More uh, a larger number than redheads in general. You know what I mean? It's like it, it's it's silly as fuck to just be like, nah, it's just rare. Fuck it, YOLO. Yeah, like think, there's think, people born with 11 I think fingers. As human there's, beings, there's, we like to package things that we can develop a palette for. We like to make things more palatable. We like to establish clear-cut rubrics yeah. right. for what is and what isn't a person. I think that's just the natural human it's tendency. That's how our brain categorizes us. But, yes. but I think that, you know, what separates us from the apes is that we can give oh. credence to these differences and create pockets of space at least for a discussion if you don't necessarily agree. I mean technically apes are more woke because they don't give a shit about these distinctions like let's be fucking real they have not created these distinctions to like vilify it you know what I mean agree or whatever mm. you know. because it's natural and beautiful and beautiful and natural yeah I think it would be an incredible disservice to the transgender community who gave us a lot of the beginning for us to fight for our rights, a separation from them, now that we have our rights. That's just so privilege of us. Like Marsha P. Johnson threw that first brick at Stonewall, and because of her- She didn't throw the first brick. And she, or the she second, got there, she the got there at 2 a.m., first of all. And second of all, Marsha P. Johnson was also a gay man, so when she was fighting for those rights, she was fighting for gay rights because she was gay. Was she a gay I totally man agree. Of the time that it was? <laughs> Wait. He just correctly, wait, he just correctly gendered her while simultaneously, <laughs> while simultaneously fucking misgendering her. That's so cool. I've never, yo, this man, this man is throwing incredible fucking hooks that I have never seen before. It's awesome. She was a gay man. She, like, you can't say she was a gay man. What the <laughs> fuck? That's so sick. That's that's actually so sick. Like, he is, he's hitting. I And I do think he's like, uh, unlike the other uh, uh, losers, like, he does seem genuine, right, with what he's saying. Um, it's it's so sick that he is, is, like, coming out with, like, really cool new ways of being, like, transphobic while being pro-trans. You know what I mean? It's awesome. She didn't, she didn't know, transition she until gay. long she after Stonewall was... actually happened. Yeah, but can't... that's neither here nor there. Well... We're here to defend... I'm here, I'm here to defend the TQ being part of the LGB. Yes, there are some gay men that will overlook what's underneath the belt. That happens. But to say that you, you have to like them, that's wrong. And I also have a heart for the Q because we can't clearly define the Q. When I was young, it was questioning. Now it's queer. Queer was a slur once upon. Now it's QAnon, <laughs> you know, which is an important part of the movement. My time, but I look at those people. <laughs> this guy's who like, yeah, I'm advocating to keep the Q, but change it from questioning to queer to QAnon, so that uh, you know I, we can welcome the QAnon folks into the gay community. <laughs> We're former homosexuals who now live a heterosexual lifestyle. They're never going to be accepted by the straight community, and they're not going to be accepted by our community. So I've put them under the Q what? umbrella. Those straight people who do have sex with the same gender on occasion, they would fall under that Q. They may not fall under the B. So I have a heart for them because they do exist in our spheres. We just can't put them on a pedestal above any of us because we are all in this together i also don't think that they should be divorced because I'm a what is what do you mean former homosexuals what the fuck what is a former homosexual man uh, he's saying they, they got ungayed <laughs> there's no such thing <laughs> uh, homosexual yeah, yeah sorry i i retired from dick and you know <laughs> took one too many you know, mm. in the in the great dick war. Everybody knows that the more dick you have or take. <laughs> uh, didn't Milo do that? Exactly. It's not real. It's not a real thing. Like, Milo is still incredibly gay, okay? A huge disability advocate. I have a mental health condition. It's very different from someone who uses a wheelchair. We still have a disability. What you're getting at is that we're a minority. Thank They're a minority. You. And the more that you take apart those minorities, mm -hmm. the harder it is for us to fight for our rights. Preach. The Greek community yes, is, the Greek is already divided. Minorities. Since the Greek community is already divided, I think separating the two is going to make them even more divided and a lot more nuancy between queer or queer and T with LGB. It's a double-edged sword because in one way it's like, okay, well... Ex-homosexuals exist and we are valid? Wait, what? <laughs> there ain't no fucking way. Wait, have you seen the guy that was preaching about how he like... I'm not gay no yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am delivered. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. It's a classic. <laughs> But like, but exa exactly, those are memes because that person is still very much gay. But we don't want to divide too much because we don't want to 
lose our united front against heteronormativity or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, if we can't teach the nuances of our various identities mm -hmm. to a heteronormative society, then it's like, okay, well, oh, aren't you gay, aren't you trans? Like, it's, it's all the same thing to them. So I think it's mm -hmm. a balance between being all awash and then also noting that we are uniquely made up of all <laughs> these different, yeah. different experiences. And but I think if we had a stronger community, that like, that wouldn't be the case, I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. Like, if you don't like me because who I am, I know that my brother right here or my sister right there is gonna like me and they're gonna support me, and that's all I need because it's all about my personal experience and what's in my circle. You don't need to be in my circle, but because it's within my own circle that I'm getting all this, you know, belittlement and hatred. Everyone just wants to be accepted, honestly. Like, that's the way it's looked at. And can't we all, to some extent, identify underneath the cue? Like your attraction maybe has shifted in some way to different types of men. Like things are constantly evolving and in my opinion fluid. So to kind of force ourselves even into the LGB is to sit within the binary that doesn't help any of us anyways. But I think all the Q stuff is just a matter of your person your personality. Right. Like yeah. we have so many different labels and you like this kind of person, then you're this sexuality, when reality just goes back to but it's not you're a gay, straight, or bi, or and then a, your personality. But our community is not doing itself any services by categorizing ourselves. Bear. Twink. Yeah. It, 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 and then, it, it, and then you see it. I mean, it helps Wait. me filter out on Grinder. <laughs> you know? Okay. That does help. Like, objectively speaking, it does help find what you're looking for. Okay, but, like, but that's not, like, a legal distinction. Like, what the fuck is he saying? <laughs> like... But like it helps, it helps. Like you, you go to you go to a bear bar as a twink, and they're like, "Get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> they don't <laughs> let you. Yeah, you're legally a twink. Okay, stick to your own kind. <laughs> false twinks have to register with the government. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Austin has been arrested on numerous occasions <laughs> trying to falsely identify as a twink. No. People he call, goes, people he goes call to the me. DMV all the time, the dick uh, the, motor vehicle. Look, look, people people call me a twink as an insult. Like, they think it's an insult. Number one, for many years, I tried to be a twink. I really did. I, was <laughs> I really did. I, I tried to shave my face. I, I had like... You still do. No, I don't Dude, try to be a twink. One day, you're going to fucking live and let live, and you're going to fucking show that glorious beard, and like, <laughs> and the amount of twinks that are going to line up to get fucking blasted by you. <laughs> like, Troy Savon is going to hit you up and be like, no, mate, I want to suck your willy. No, 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 no. And Troy Savon likes twinks. We've and then you're going to give me a fucking phone call and be like, Hassan, you were right. You were so fucking right. I've been telling you for years. You need to do two things. One, grow the beard out. Yeah. And two, say the F word. No, okay. okay. Well, I, I have been saying You've the been F saying word the F word a lot. A lot. Yeah, I've been maybe call a little it, too much. I, I've been I've been using it in 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 many different places. Yeah, maybe a little too much. I've been <laughs> look. Okay, we, we gotta have an intervention. Been, look, regardless, here's the deal. This is what I've realized is I try to be a twink for many years, and for some reason I try to be a twink because that's what I was attracted to. So that's what I thought that like I w should look like because that's what I was attracted to. That's what I thought other people found attractive. <laughs> Reality is, you need to embrace what you are naturally. I think that's the biggest thing, and yeah. you will you will unironically or not ironic that's not the right word but embracing who you are most uh, uh what you most naturally are will attract those that you are attracted to i think that that's like that's what i've learned mm -hmm. so like like, like, like if you're an unsubscribed you need to embrace that you're gonna see a three minute average yeah. at the top of the hour yeah so like i've <laughs> i've started to embrace the fact that look i'm in my late 20s right I'm not. I have not embraced it growing a big ass beard. Okay, dude, you have you have to do it. But no. like that's that. Yeah, okay. That's, take your own advice. Embrace that you're old. No, I'm not old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm there you go. Exactly. Being in your late twenties is not you're, old. You're okay? old. You're old. <laughs> late, <laughs> late. Late. Oh, late twenties. Yeah, I am in my late twenties. Uh huh. I'm not in my thirties. For how how much longer? Okay, you know, a couple years. I got. Couple, <laughs> I got a couple years left. Remember when you had to. Yeah, you remember when oh, you had don't, to, don't you dare. You remember when you had <laughs> don't, to fucking don't, don't lie you to a foreign government. <laughs> don't you dare. Remember when you had to lie to a foreign uh, government. Hassan, I am 26 years old. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay look. Oh, look. dude. Okay. You, you've, you've literally engaged in international crimes. Hold on, look at this. Whoa, distraction. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, wow. <laughs> He's so hot, folks. He's so hot for. How old are you again? This oh, year? 28 years old. 28 you, years young. Oh, you, you're this year. You're 28. Is oh that? yeah, I just turned 28. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Huh. 
Interesting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Look it up. Look it up, folks. Find it on my Wikipedia. They changed it to forty. That's not right, though. (laughs) Wait, you lied for like seven days. It was like it said I was forty-five years old on my Wikipedia page. Okay. Yeah. Um. Anyway, but uh, as we were going back to embracing (laughs) your identity, if you're unsubscribed, you're about to see a three-minute ad break. (laughs) Here's a three-minute ad break. Now, one thing I will not accept is men male male pattern baldness. That's something that is. Yeah, no, you don't have to. I don't either. I'm not like I refuse to accept that. I don't either. Yeah, like I am going to probably take Propecia, but I just can't sacrifice his sex drive. I don't know what like I could. I don't know if if I'd live with myself. Is it true that you called someone a? Strag it in high score despite being by, beside them being by. Yeah, they were showing very heterosexual be- behavior. <laughs> I called it like Austin, I said. Austin Just said, like when, when you Austin tend to- said <laughs> by invisibility. No, no, like they were. Be- I thought I, I made a mistake. <laughs> I made a mistake. Okay, I made a mistake. They were bisexual. That's that's my word. Strag it because I'm straight. Oh, you're gonna say take it. it. You yeah. can't say it. Look, you can't say it. Strag it. No, look. <laughs> I, I, I saw them. They were saying some very. They were they were uh, participating in a lot of stragatry, and so I had to call them what I thought. Uh, I call it. I call it as I see it. Okay. Let's okay. keep going. On, yeah. the, on the apps, on the profiles. Oh, no fats, no fans, no this, no that. We're already segregating ourselves. We can still be a community while having a better way of explaining what the differences are between the letters. Okay. Because, right. I mean, even in our conversation today, you guys are talking about a lot of anti-LGBTQ legislation. And as if I was Oh, my for- God. The real reason was because you said you're too old for Timothy Chalamet? <laughs> oh, yeah. Why did I call him a straggit for that? <laughs> you guys are taking note. That was weeks ago, okay? <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, but that was that's bullshit. No, that's deserved. They yeah, deserved it. Yeah, I'm, they I'm, deserved it. You you were valid. I'm a man in my early 20s. <laughs> <laughs> early 20s? Uh, I'm in my early 20s. I graduated you, you high just, school. You just, ago. yeah, you just three are no longer ago, a class teen. Class of 2020, okay? All right. Okay, let's keep going. person watching, I would think, oh my gosh, like they're coming for my rights. I'm, they're coming for my rights. But a lot of times that legislation has to do with the uh, what the fuck plus. is this? And I'm not saying... I- Wait, I'm sorry. Wait, uh, uh, <laughs> Hassan needs to put his tits and armpits away. He's exciting the gays too much, which is my thing. Get away. Have fun <laughs> with your women. Strag it. Hassan <laughs> Piker is a strag. <laughs> I, I, it seems you've been calling me that yeah, a lot. <laughs> well, and at first I didn't think it was a bad word, no, but now I feel like look, you're you're kind of hateful look, with the way you're using it. I it was, seems. Look, I discovered this word recently, and I was hurling at you. I'll huh. be honest with you. You kind of fucked up. You were the biggest target I could find. The straightest yeah. person I knew. Well, when you age, you become more bigoted. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just it's a normal part. And more of, conservative. Yeah, right? it's a, it's a natural and beautiful part of life. Yeah, I think. Yeah. True. Anne, you almost see me, Anne. Okay, Nizan Yabujan. Okay, Saul. What, what did the what was there? What was there? Uh, no, that's not good. Uh, the beard, on the other hand, will look good. What were people? What, what was that comedian? I saw on Netflix there was an ad for this comedian. Or no, I saw it on TikTok. This comedian said that like liking World War II documentaries was also oh Shane Gillis. Yeah, also known as early onset conservatism or something like that. Shane Gillis said that. Yeah, well, he said. <laughs> All right, let's uh, keep going. Let's I get agree with it. I'm not. We don't need to go into the legislation. All I'm saying is that the narrative that gay men are being attacked when other letters are not giving any merit to the attacks, it is confusing and it's harmful to young gay men and their success because they're force-fed this narrative that they can't. That's totally fair, but there's been over 560 legislation bills put into a, like some sort of vote, right? And over 220 of those have been for transgender. That leaves, what, around 300 plus, not just at the TQ. <coughs> I think that there's a lot of nuance when it comes to the laws that we have to talk about. There, but either way, when you say over 500 LGBTQ+, plus, it, the, the distinction between the two gets lost. And I don't I guess, think that it's... I passed one, it one of those laws. Why? I passed one of those laws in Nebraska. That was... That, 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 what? He's like, wait, wait, what? There ain't no fucking way. Are you joking with me right now? He said, no, no, I, I passed one of those laws. Bro, you should shut the fuck up. You should be very embarrassed 
to say things like that. That is one of the most insane things I've ever heard. What the fuck? That protects children under the age of 18 from receiving gender affirming care and hormones. Because I've seen- And you're proud by, of that. Yes, I am very proud I of that. I am so ashamed because, of you. Because I have friends who had their first experience the with affirming care. Can, you, can, you, can I finish? Can I finish? But can I finish? We're sitting here but can with? I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? I'm sure a lot of us so disagree sad. with him, but let him- That is the most insane thing I've ever heard. Why? Why is he proud of that? What the fuck? Bro, he's just, no way. <laughs> he's <laughs> just living his best life, I tell you what. <laughs> he, said, he said you should be ashamed of yourself. I mean, it's true. That's right. He's just, that's why, that's why. The, Jesus Bro, Christ. this guy is like playing for the other team and like in different places. Like, why don't you pass it in your backyard, bitch? You know what I mean? He's like, I traveled to Nebraska to be fucking transphobic. It's like, that's insane. That's insane. Like, do it in your own backyard, bitch. You can't do it, right? You can't pass that legislation in California. So you, what, you went to Nebraska, you fucking freak, you psychopath. Let him finish because we both have things to We can to all say. talk, but like, let's let... Because when finish. I pass this yeah. legislation that you say targets LGBT people, I sat next to a young girl who her first experience with this type of care was a double mastectomy at 15. She's now 19, doesn't and know if she'll be able to. It's, it's actually not. very common. Because how common? I want a number. How Can common? I finish? How common? Can I yeah, you pass that legislation, you should be able to fucking immediately hit the talking points, right? That's the beautiful part about like anti-trans uh, activists is that like they literally never know how... Uh, they literally never know what the numbers actually look like because the entire aspect is it, it is revolved around a lie that this is an incredibly common thing that's happening all the fucking time and not some like super unique circumstance uh, that is infinitely more uh, complicated than the way that they're presenting it. The overwhelming majority of any kind of gender affirming care that revolves around plastic surgery is done to cis people, okay? It could be a uh, nose job, it could be a boob job, it could be a mastectomy, it's or a breast reduction. A lot of that is done to cis teenagers, not trans ones, okay? And not only that, but also the empirical evidence is never on their side, which is why they refuse to fucking uh, learn about this information. Because not only that, but also the the actual the actual uh, uh, satisfaction rate for trans affirming care for adults especially because there isn't that many there aren't that many minors that get this kind of uh you know uh, uh life altering uh, surgery or anything like that it's just not uh, uh it's not statistically relevant it's not even in the fucking margins but adults have an infinitely higher satisfaction rate uh than trans adults have an infinitely higher satisfaction rate uh, when receiving plastic surgery in the form of gender affirming care then fucking cis people do cis people's gender affirming care uh in the form of plastic surgery is quite literally like they have way more post-surgical regret like unimaginably more post-surgical regret than trans people do okay trans people's surgical regret is like around what one percent or something for cis people and this isn't even just plastic surgery but for like even fucking knee surgery and what uh, you know things like that that you need for survival. I'm not saying that you don't need it for other things, but like people getting hip replacement, for example, is that like what sixty five percent? It's nuts. It's nuts. It's ridiculous. Okay, the regret rate of gender affirming care is like at most one percent. Yeah, I just found this from Voice of America News. How common is transgender treatment regret detransitioning? So. Detransitioning is incredibly uncommon. Not only that, but like a lot of people who are detransitioning, for example, are also oftentimes still trans, okay? But they will be non-binary or go by uh, go with they, them pronouns. And yet they are still lumped under the category of, they're still lumped under the category of like detransitioners that are no longer uh, a part of the trans community, Okay. It's very, very, very stupid. Uh, anyway, how often do transgender people regret transitioning? In an uh, in updated uh, guidelines issued this year, World Professional Association for Transgender Health said that evidence of later regret is scant, but patients should be told about the possibility during psychological counseling. 
Dutch research team from several years ago found no evidence of regret in transgender adults who had comprehensive psychological evaluations of childhood before undergoing puberty blockers, blockers and hormone treatment. Some studies suggest that the rate of regret have declined over the years as patient selection and treatment methods have improved. In a review of 27 studies involving almost 8,000 teens and adults who had transgender surgeries, mostly in Europe, U.S., and Canada, 1% on average expressed regret. Okay? When you look at that number, you realize that this is completely completely a made-up problem because one percent regret okay one percent regret on remember trans people which is already one percent of the population okay you're talking about one percent of one percent like it's literally like a handful of people the numbers are literally a handful okay and these guys are making a fucking big stink about it, trying to, like, justify sending bomb threats to children's hospitals and shit, when, yes, knee replacement regret is, like, 20%. It's fucking nuts. It's nuts. It's nuts. What is this? A really nice analogy for it. The trans healthcare trolley problem. An unknown number of trans people have been tied to one of the train tracks while a runaway trolley is set to roll down an empty track saving the trans people. However, that guy over there might voluntarily walk onto the train track. Do you pull the lever sacrificing the trans people to protect that one guy from possibly making a mistake? Yeah. It is always in the hypotheticals. It's like, what if someone who's not trans gets trans surgery? That's like, <laughs> that's literally the, that's it. That's why we have to protect, uh, you know, the, the one guy that might accidentally get a fucking trans surgery or some shit. Anyway, and the irony is because it's 1%, 1% uh, of the population is transgender, and of that percentage that go through tra uh, transitioning, 1% regret doing so. That is a minuscule amount, definitely not a strong argument against it. There is no other medical intervention on this fucking planet that this much legislation would pass against. Do you understand? Like, like there's nothing else. There's no regulation. If only 1%. It, can you imagine what percentage of, like, uh, uh, of, of flight, for example, lead in, in fatalities? Like, what, what percentage, percentage of, of, of commercial air travel, uh, travel uh, lead to, like, an actual fatality? Uh, it's, it's, like, it's, it's, like, 0. 0.00001. Yeah. Imagine if they fucking banned air travel now because uh, for that reason. Like, yeah. They're like, nope, sorry, can't do it. What if people get in a plane and then they die? I have a plane-related frustration to air out today. But okay, well, we'll keep after, it safe for the pot. Save for the pot. Okay, okay. Yeah, imagine being like, we, we are no longer allowing knee surgeries because knee surgery regret rates are at 20 to 30%, so you can no longer get a knee surgery. That would be insane. That would be fucking insane, right? Except... It, of course it works because uh, for trans people because trans people are marginalized. They're gross. They're icky. They're weird. They're scary. I don't really understand it. What if, you know, what if I like girl dick? That's the, that's the major reason why uh, so many of these fucking freaks are like, uh, so many of these freaks uh, behave this way. Anyway. <sighs> Oops, wrong one. All right. I you, you passed You're the law. You're asking me a question in the middle of my statement. Law. You passed, passed a law that affects so many kids from feeling like themselves. Yes, I did. Transgender I'm proud kids. of my law. Oh my that, that, that's unfortunate, and I'm ashamed if of you. If that's what it's going to take to get you to stop so I can finish my, my thought, I appreciate that. All right, you know so, what? I'm going to shut up until you finish, but I would really like to say something when you're done. Sure. The person that I testified with, who their experience was the a double mastectomy. Let, 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 let him finish. 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 Let people talk. Okay, that one person. Look how fucking sassy he is, bro. The people that want you to pass this law are freaks, okay? They think you're trans, dumbass. They would hate crime you just as easily if it was legally permissible. Like, you're so stupid with your fucking sassy-ass avatar hair that you're whipping around, dumbass. Was one person in Nebraska, but I know a plethora of what other state people. Hold on, let him finish. Let I finish. know a plethora of other people in other states the all over this country. Are so easy. I know a plethora of people all okay. over the country. Let's pause can we can not do this? We'll like, what is, the, what, is, okay. what is the? Can we let him talk? Let's just You're pause. gonna get time yeah. to talk. I don't it's appreciate. Okay. I know I'm serious you, too, but let's but finish, let him finish. I, he's pissed off more than you, and he's quiet. Just let him. You're gonna get your point out. Just let him. I'm good. Thank you. Just let him talk. Okay, let's pause. You say how many people? You say it's a small subset. But for the people who it affects, it affects them for the rest of their lives. A decision they made, they made as a child 
will affect them for the rest of their lives. This per First of all, what happened in that circumstance is literally not a thing that is legally permissible to begin with, okay? You can't do that. Like, you, it has to be an incredibly unique circumstance for someone who is a minor to receive a double mastectomy as, as trans medical care. You can get a double mastectomy as a minor for any other reason, but you can't get it if you're trans, okay? So that's number one. Remember, you can get, it like, you can get uh, some form of like breast reduction. You can get a double mastectomy, obviously, if you have like cancer or some shit like that. You know what I mean? I don't know how, how you would actually get uh, cancer that early on, like breast cancer. But you can't get it as a trans minor unless there is a genuine medical intervention that is an absolute fucking necessity. It is super unique, okay? Like, you are quite literally talking about something that doesn't fucking happen at all as though it's the most common thing and the, and, and the person you're using is literally 1% of the 1%. Actually, even smaller than that because we're talking about minors. We're talking about trans minors, right? Like, trans minors is even smaller than the 1% of the 1%. Across the board, trans people are 1% of the population and only 1% of trans people that get, adults and minors, that get uh, uh, any kind of like trans affirming uh, healthcare regret it person will never feel their sensation on their chest. They don't know if they're going to ever be able to have a child and they know they will never be able to breastfeed. They will never be a woman in the regular senses. And this is happening more and more because we are conditioning our young people to say, hey, this is okay, this is okay. You can make these decisions. As a, as a, as a senior in this community, I have to say, wait a second, you guys are kids. Wait till you have your whole lives. Let's talk about this. Honestly, shame on you for not going after the actual facts. I realize your anecdotal experiences um, move you, and I respect and appreciate that. But let's be- I, I don't. Fuck. <laughs> fuck you, dude. <laughs> like- <laughs> Perfectly clear. The most permanent- Yeah, they, they should just beat the shit out of them. <laughs> they should be like, fuck this. <laughs> and just started wailing on them. Thing a kid Fucking can go asshole. through is puberty. First of all, so when you when you deny a kid the opportunity to pause puberty, let, we're just talking. First of all, talking about puberty. Which straight kids well, on, do all the time. All the time. It's, all the time. Yes, since the '80s, kids have been prescribed puberty blockers for a variety of reasons, and the the law you passed prevents that. So you steal from kids who would. Yeah, it's also exactly. It's also idiotic because like a lot of this stuff passes, and they basically use it for exclusively trans people but you have now made it legally permissible to like, you know, expand that law in the direction of cis kids as well. It's very frustrating. It's so stupid. Like in an effort to shit on trans people, you just let fundamentalists also move the needle into the direction of like any kind of fucking uh, hormone uh, uh, regulation. It's so stupid. Like what's next, birth control? Well, you know, get excited for that prospect as well because the very same people that are attacking trans people do want to fucking stop birth control as well. I'd like to be able to pause the ability to further. Fewer than 3% of people who do any kind of transition regret it and go back. Fewer than 3%. Finally, I want to make this very clear. The, I'm not done. You were so mean to everybody else who want to talk to you. My turn. He's getting real sassy <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah. Gay wig is popping off. Gay wig. <laughs> there has been really robust standards of care laid out by all the leading medical associations that has been in existence for a long time that is science-based about guidelines for these things. But to be clear, the guidelines are very specific about this is supposed to be the parent's decision with their kid, with their medical provider. What you did was rob all those families of choices. Your opinion, because you believe you know better than science, you know better than parents, you know better than people who even do know themselves, you're going to prevent them from having <laughs> options because you personally have a problem with something that a couple of people and some other people you're aware of knew. None like of them are statistically significant. You, maybe you've got dozens of people you know of, hundreds. That's a teeny tiny little sliver. You will never know or know of all of these people, and yet you've decided for them, and shame on you for it. I think Cook. we all can agree, though, that Cook. even though he's passed his legislation, legislation, over 18, you don't care what they do. I don't care what they do. You don't, you're just yeah, yeah, the, the distinction that those like Matt Walsh always make, too. Thank God, you know. <laughs> that's, that's surely, 
surely a distinction that they will also carry on you know surely more so protecting the though the kids he's protecting that kids are and like up. also what is this fucking argument it's like yeah we i don't give a fuck about like owning a bunch of uh, uh trans teenagers and like causing them to commit suicide uh you know but it's fine like the the adults can do it like oh okay sick man thanks as long as you stop it before they actually get to fucking uh the age of 18 because they killed themselves uh then it's fine uh j fred king thank you for the 25 gifted subs of his laws more so protecting those kids that are just tomboys tom girls that are just that are, they're being forced for this idea like oh i'm gay maybe i'm a girl and then like they're just like pink they like are more feminine and it's like, oh, actually transition. And I don't it's think it's that simple. And I just yeah, hate this is such an absolutist discussion on both sides because it's like you guys are like, no, there's what nothing. The no, fuck? I'm, not, I'm not being absolutist. I'm not being absolutist there, either. Okay, but Please I just don't, don't put think, words in my mouth. Okay, I'm disappointed I'm, that someone can you let me is talk proud this? to sit can you here and talk? pass a law that harms children I got when it. we know that our we, queer we know community your point. We, we got it. is so harmed already. All I'm saying is that your guys are not making space for the people who have gone through this process and regret it. I personally know someone in the same situation that yeah. you were in and I'm not sitting here arguing for either side because I think this is a very nuanced discussion it used to be a two-year huh. process uh, now centrist. it's six months those things are changing because the capital and the motive behind it is now which I'm sure that you guys on this side are against capitalistic you know health care that's pushing it the and capital? those guidelines mm -hmm. yes, and what, yes. When, what, and there's a lot of money to be made in gender affirming a care a lot of money oh, to really? the doctors who are 1.6 million it. per child that gets on it that's throughout their lifetime that's how much that there are so many other things that kids get that make people more money I understand that. that, but you're not leaving I hate that argument. I fucking discussion. hate that Actually, argument. Actually, I would argue that you guys aren't leaving room for nuance because you're deciding. <laughs> you I, I never said a statement. Well, okay, I apologize. Oh, my and God. For those of you that I have been mean to, I didn't. I'm sorry. I oh my love God. and respect all of you as people. I don't think it's <laughs> oh nuance is valuable, <laughs> and that's why we leave it up to the parents big. and the medical professionals and the individuals. He brought up big trans. There are people. He said that the reason why. And regret it. There, there are people who get nose jobs uh, and regret giving it. There's no such thing. We don't give nose jobs to kids. There, like, kids like, kids they're, can they're, get the nose jobs, they're they're jobs can get breast jobs. jobs that that of course, kids are getting this all the time. Oh, it's big trends. Sorry, I think it sounds like we're not really going to find a middle ground between some of you. We will have to hug But Can I actually sort of like wrap it up into a middle ground moment? Yeah. Go for it. I think this is exactly going back to the point of why these there is a separation because it's a very lived different experience than just being a cisgendered gay man. That was the whole point of the prompt. This is everyone's opinion, and no matter like how frustrating it can be, going oh, and attacking is, people, like, it was just a lot. Oh, um, I see and, liberalism uh, so much different. If that was me, like I would be so mad, broadcast. and I would just go off. Like so, me, you know, like I five or six really, years like, ago. Would have been and I just yeah. want to apologize because that's absolutely right. Let's and just I broke my own all rule agree to disagree. Being fired up in the things I and love one Sorry, that's not how you deserve to be treated. And I ultimately do side with my liberal brothers um, <laughs> that I don't that dude is a genocidal freak okay and uh, and and you know any number of awful things that you say when you get passionate about uh, him excitedly talking about how he, he, he's gonna you know how he played a role in like killing potentially killing trans teenagers in Nebraska or at the very least like displacing families in Nebraska like him being so giddy about that like no amount of, of retaliation is going to be too far in that situation. Fuck that guy. He's such a smug piece of shit, too. Fuck him. Fuck him, dude. Which, of course, they have already expanded to adults. They're always expanding it to adults. That's the, all, that's the goal. Hey, guys, this might come as a surprise to you, but absolutely zero people actually give a fuck about, like, high school sports for women, okay? Nobody gave a shit about girls sports in high school that was simply a point of contention that had viability in the uh larger market they tried it originally with bathroom bills they tried transphobia in the immediate aftermath of obergefell when they realized that like gay rights were solidified at least for the time being okay so they moved on to something different they moved on with the same exact principles with the same exact fucking hatred they just specifically uh changed the crosshairs to trans people okay trans existence trans existence in the public so here's what they did first they attacked uh trans people by uh, uh by doing bathroom bills where they were like oh yeah you know trans people need to be in the bathroom of their own gender or whatever that was 
profoundly unsuccessful. So much so that even Trump, who was running for president at the time, okay, literally came out against it and said, let North Carolina do, uh, I mean, North Carolina should just leave things as it is, calm the fuck down, okay? So then they went back to the drawing board and focus group tested what kind of anti-trans legislation would be more accepted by a broader population. And Americans love the concept of meritocracy and fairness. And what area do we still have some level of meritocracy Trans and fairness? For Trump. What area do we have some level of uh, uh, meritocracy in, in the United States of America, in American existence? Sports. Yeah. So they, real, they realize that if they were to instead say, oh, actually, we want to pair up transphobia with like <laughs> trans people somehow encroaching in spaces uh, that, that uh, are otherwise dominated by cis women... Uh, then you can make a much more viable, much more popular argument against trans people existing in society. So they did that. And that has a lot of popularity, around 60%. Okay? Queers for Trump. The reason why they're pushing, the reason why they are pushing that button over and over again is not because they legitimately give a fuck about trans teenagers, all three of them in any particular state, across three separate uh, fields. Uh, uh, participating with cis women. They care about it because it's an entry point into legislating away trans existence. That's it. They never cared about just protecting minors or whatever either. They just know that that is a, a more permissible form of bigotry that they can expand on. Okay? That's it. And that's always been the case, and that's precisely what they're doing right now, right in front of your fucking eyes. That's why I push back on this dumb shit all the goddamn time because I'm, uh, you know, a, a foe <laughs> and I want it to be way harder to just like be, I want to be, I want to be doing uh, transphobia on expert difficulty. That's why I do it. <laughs> if I arm you with the facts, then it's like much harder for me, but much more entertaining and much better for me to be transphobic in that situation. I agree with the legislation, but I, it's not malicious. I see where you're coming from and I, that exists and people that, energy that live here, they do, so they, they have that. But I, I do disagree with legislation, but I don't necessarily have to personally attack you. Oh my God, Drag Shut up. shows are too sexual for minors. Oh my God. I think it's important. You know what's funny? Oh my God. Important you know what's funny about this? Is like drag shows are too sexual for minors. Like it depends, right? Oh, this is, oh God. It, it yeah. depends, it depends, uh. right? But also, dog. That means no more Disney. You know, you know what I mean? Like, no more Disney. You can't watch. You can't let your child watch Disney, okay? Disney has to be 18 plus. Yeah. Well, like, I'm curious what these... Drag is a cartoonish uh, <laughs> caricature of gender and sexuality in a lot of instances, which is why it can be PG-13 or it can be 18 plus. If you want to see what drag looks like in a PG-13 or even younger than that uh, category then it's Disney. Disney movies is the perfect depiction of that, okay? Like Bugs Bunny and drag. Disney movies. Uh, what's the, the fucking... Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh -huh. Like these are... These Help are, is on the way, dear! Yeah, these are, uh, these are totally valid, totally acceptable Help instances of fucking... Totally acceptable instances of drag that is not inherently sexual and that children can watch. Oh, Robin okay? Williams. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. Man. Yeah. Great All the fucking movie, man. Robin Williams. Oof. So people fucking losing their goddamn minds over it is so stupid. And they always use like a hypersexual, uh, the hypersexual versions of drag to be like, children are seeing this fucked up. Not put a blanket statement over everything. I was just going to say um, that. Because I know already when they step forward that we're going to get the missed out fire example. And then it's going to be like, oh, well, why is that okay for kids? And drag is not. I love a good drag show. I frequent them all the time. Most of them are not appropriate for children Mo yeah that's just a self-report dog the ones that you're going to are horny you know <laughs> what i mean bro but like but 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 also like okay uh, keep keep like i don't i don't i've been to many drag shows it's not like a a, 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 a there's a bunch of children watching drag shows but also like what are we but again what are we talking about because it's just like it's performance art okay it's performance art if you take your child okay to the motherfucking opera. A big chunk of opera, it also features drag. You know what I mean? Are, 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 we, are, we too, are they too young to, to you know, 
uh, go to the opera? Is that what is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, I guess I don't want to ask that the conservatives because they're so fucking stupid. Isn't Mrs. Doubtfire cross-dressing, which is different from drag? I mean, you think you think conservatives make the distinction between cross-dressing and drag? What are you, crazy? If that was the case, why the fuck are they constantly cross-dressing to shit on trans people? Nobody over there is going, oh, well, Stephen Crowder's well, technically okay, cross-dressing. So, it's different. So, Hassan, isn't the, the problem here is that they, they put you in this weird position where you have to defend and say that, like, it's appropriate for... We want to like they. You have to sit there and be like, we want to bring our children to drag shows. Like I don't want to bring my fucking nieces and nephews to a drag show in general. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you, you see what I'm saying? Like they put us in this position, and they're just using that as like it's inappropriate for children to ban drag shows, right? They're leveraging that yeah. sort of argument to to try to ban all drag shows. Professional wrestling has sex, makeup, vulgarity, violence. Professional wrestling has sex and all of that, and five-year-olds can go. Exactly. And and absolutely zero people should be making an argument to fucking ban professional wrestling, okay? That's it's what I'm saying. Best. But, like, look, like, look, as you said, some drag shows are inappropriate for children, but it's just, like, it, they act as if, like, we're trying to drag, like, we're trying to put on drag shows for a bunch of children. I've never seen a child at the Abbey. I'll be the, honest. On the a only, Sunday. Uh, well, Yeah. Well, I've never seen yeah, a child. It's at 21 the Abbey, plus. Yeah. It's a twenty-one plus establishment. That's why. No, it's not. Not during the day. It's not. You don't got. They don't card during the day. Oh, really? No. You can. You can come in. Right. Anybody can come in. I think it <clears> past <throat> a certain time. Regardless. Uh, regardless. Let's be real. You can't go to the. Or maybe uh, they just don't card me. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't go to. You cannot go to theaters in the Denver region now because Lobo's out and about and she's sucking and fucking. Okay. So if you have a child, do not. Allow your child to go to a movie theater or an actual theater theater where they're playing plays. You can't do that. Lobo will be sucking and fucking in the near vicinity of your child. Okay? Most of them. Not all, but most of them. There are instances that are circulating on social media that represent a small minority of drag shows. They're talking about like drag story hour. Yeah, that one is like the most frustrating. Because you're just saying that it's, like, gross that a drag queen is reading a book. Because not a single one of those drag queens are doing anything beyond, like, Ursula, okay? That, that kind of stuff is so fucking idiotic because it's not, like, it, it's not like they're, you know, going around and being like, look at my dick to children, okay? Which would be illegal, and you should go to jail if you do that. There is no... That's, like, a totally separate issue, except... Unless you're Lauren Boebert's former husband, who Lauren Boebert married after he did that to Lauren Boebert when she was a minor uh, at a bowling alley. You know, women's clothing is inherently sexual. Okay, dude. <laughs> Where kids are present and then it's over-sexual. Yeah. You see your own mom dressed up and you're like, I'm so horned up. Is that how it works? It's inherently sexual? Lies, people pleasuring themselves, wearing Fucking outfits weirdo. that are representative of genitalia. What? For that reason, I would say that people are pleasuring themselves in drag shows? What? Do I think it needs to be legislated? What I'm kind of drag shows is this freak, motherfucker dog. going to? He's a freak. That's what I'm saying. He's going to the fucking craziest drag shows, bro. Drag shows are about... What? I've never seen somebody pleasure themselves at a, at a drag show. Yeah, he's a freak, dog. He's a freak. No, because I don't trust the government to legislate it responsibly, oh, but God. I do trust parents to use their better judgment and know that when something is typically sexual, it most likely will be, so just don't take your kids there. Yeah. And I, I disagree with when there were, there were folks trying to ban drag. You can't do that. We have the First Amendment for free expression. I think drag should be able to be celebrated and just kind of dress however you want. I think it is good. I think it's great, but then sometimes there are instances where it's not, and like we have to talk about Look, that rather than I'm be not, band but, drag or no. It's completely safe. I'm not trying to not bring my kid. Like I, I'm not trying to. I don't want to bring kids to uh, drag brunch because it's it, uh, it's hypersexualized. I don't want to bring them because I'm trying to fucking get get hammered and mm -hmm. and and and, and, and I don't and want your brunch. bitch ass. Kids. And I don't want my fucking kids around. I don't want your I'm bitch to ass kids around and me watch a drag show. <laughs> like, I don't understand why they have to make it about this. It, oh, it's so sexual, so it's inappropriate. For your children. No, it has nothing to do with that. I just Austin don't want said, my fucking kids around while I'm Austin trying to have a good time. Yeah, Austin said, I'm trying to party. No, Austin right? said, no kids at Pride, no kids at fucking uh, drag, uh, <laughs> drag shows. I'm trying to get my nut on. Yeah, okay? this is not my, 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 my Sunday. If I want to have my kids with me, I'm going to take them to the zoo this is my or kid. Disneyland. This I'm not going to. This is yeah. my kid, and I will bring her to any to drag show I want. Show. You see? This kid is allowed at drag shows. You can't see her face right now, but right there. 
You like, see her? I hate how they try to put us in this position where it's like we have to be like we want children at drag shows. Nobody wants children at drag shows. And it's not because it's, it's hypersexualized. It's because I don't want my fucking kids around my fucking uh, brunch and my mimosas while yeah, I'm trying to Austin, have a good time. Austin is anti... Uh, kids at drag for a totally separate, yeah, completely self-interested reason. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no kids on airplanes either. It, it, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to travel, not hear your fucking bitch ass. Also, kid cry. as a matter of fact, like you shouldn't be allowed to travel until you can shut the fuck up and not. It's cry. like I wouldn't take my kids to the club either. Like I don't understand it. It's like there's a lot of places you don't take kids to. Doing? Like I'm also not going to take my kids to an Elton John concert, not because he's gay and and sexual. Wait, really? Why not? Why because not? I don't want to fuck my kids. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to listen to Elton John. They can up. stay with grandma. Okay, okay? you are, you are gonna... just a bad parent, <laughs> no. dude. You're like not. No, you are going to be a they're horrible gonna stay parent with grandma, one day. And I'm going to watch Elton John. Okay. Okay. I think we need to have that middle ground conversation on what that means. <laughs> As a child who wore my sister's clothes, I wore my mom's makeup. I put on their heels. I did all the things. I just explored my. You know, oh, yeah, one day your children are gonna see all the times that you've shit on them. There, uh, look, your hypothetical children are gonna be just. I'm gonna be a fabulous father. No, you're not. I'm gonna be a fabulous. You're father. gonna be a horrible. Are dad. you kidding me? I am going to be such a great dad. But <laughs> look, one thing about being a parent. As all parents in the chat will understand, sometimes it's got to be, you, you got to be, well, you, you got to have you time. You're not a fucking parent. I know, Wait, but I know. Why, why are you talking if about there's anything parents I know, in the chat will understand? If there's anything I know about being a parent, it's you got to have you time to make, if you don't take care of yourself first, you're not going to be a good parent. Okay. That's so funny. Guys, okay. Feeling comfortable expressing yourself and, and being around drag could be like for a kid like me, if I saw that it was okay to dress I'm up a father and, to and two nobody cats. was like shaming me, maybe that could be helpful, Speaking but that doesn't change the fact that the majority today. of drag shows that we see today are sexualized. Well, we have to even jokes. start with yeah. drag as where its origin comes from. Here it happens mostly in bars. That's where these queens <laughs> are getting their training. I myself in my time have helped a drag queen organize a show that was family he friendly and I use the quotation Nebraska because she actually took it shows. out of a bar she's like we're we can't make something family friendly and still produce yeah, it he's like guys you don't understand I am I am a sea of contradictions I am Mario <laughs> gay man likes to wear heels also thinks we should kill trans people okay <laughs> you don't understand I've thrown drag shows where I invited the NRA yeah. and the gays against <laughs> groomers lobby to come and red wedding all the trans people <laughs> That were there to watch the drag show. You don't understand. I've done both. Okay. <laughs> this guy is such a fucking massive weirdo. So fucking cute today. In a place where they serve alcohol. So she actually ended up renting a theater, asking people to pay for tickets. And she put on a produced show where they came in from backstage and they would come on on stage like you would expect to see a Broadway show. And she made sure that she told anybody that was going to come in and perform. You don't grab your breast. You don't grab your crotch. You don't shake. Oh, so, oh, I don't get it. So, I, I you, wait, you don't shake. Wait, this guy did the lamest drag show of all time. He said, no dancing. Like, what is this, fucking Footloose, dude? What the hell? He said, no dancing. It's illegal. This, like, what? You think, like, if you do a fucking all-ages drag show and you can't, like, even d dance? Like, what, what are you doing then? You're just, like, sitting there maybe reading a book and you call it, I don't know, maybe Drag Queen Story Hour? Hmm. Maybe you could do something like that. You know, dude, we have to make sure that it ha has to be uh, uh, available and consumable for the general public. Because why is there this idea that ev like that's what people want to do sure with their kids? Confuse children. We don't. Who wants to take people. their kids to a fucking drag show? To be a I want to meet him. Bro, it, it's it, the irony is like there are plenty of things that you could consider drag that you, that are all ages appropriate, and that's like well, that's I know I agree with that. Trust yeah. me, I agree with that. Don't don't get me wrong. Right? Like, I, I agree with you 100%. There's, that's what I'm trying to say is that they're not inherently sexual, number one. And there's ways to present it in a way that they're not sexual children. I just don't understand why you would want to go enjoy a Sunday fun day with your kids. That's, that's just my, that's my opinion. Um, I kind of want to skip the I would date a trans man one because it's, like, so stupid. And I'm not interested in, in hearing their dumbass takes on it. And, um, and move directly into the more contentious one. LGBT topics should be taught in school. I think I'm going to skip the drag show one as well. Like we've seen enough of it. You know what I mean? Cause th this one is at least like interesting. Yeah, uh, there's yeah. a, there's a point of contention there. They're just forcing me to think that I want to bring my kids to drag brunch. And, and, the, and it's not because it's sexual. It's because I just don't want to fuck with my, like, I just don't want to fuck around 
and have my kids when I'm trying to have fun. You know what I mean? Uh, just trying to have fun. Especially in a gay club, like you would think like, you know, everybody's just kind of hyping people up, but it's not the case where it's like, you know, you step in there, pumps on, you know, wearing a skirt and you have like six mm. cis gay men. Like, Wait. you know, sometimes it, it is not what you say, but how you say it. It is one of those, if that's not Wait, what you like, then that's wrong. That's nobody. It is not what you say, but how you say it, you that's know? Wait, they're still talking about I would date a trans man. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. gone to like gay clubs and trans people have been there and you know, we're all supposed to be like under one umbrella. We're all supposed, especially in a gay club, like you would think like, you know, everybody's just yeah. kind of hyping people up, but it's not the case where it's like, you know, you step in there, pumps on, you know, wearing a skirt and you have like six mm. cis gay men eyeing you down or treating you differently all because you're transgender. So it's not even a situation of, oh, I don't like you because that's not my type, mm. but it's the way you go about it. That's fair. I only didn't step up because I've never faced this, however, of all the kinds of men that I'm into, and I kind of am into a wide variety of men, my assumption is I don't think I'll be sexually satisfied. Austin is an ally in this field, by the way. He has said before that, uh, what was the twink? I forget their name. There was this fucking uh, uh, twink with uh, uh, a, a trans man. Uh, yeah, Noah. Noah Way Babes mm -hmm. that Austin said he would absolutely do nutty things to. When, <laughs> yeah. when I asked in a private conversation, to be yes. fair. So it's not yes. like he was being like over the top horny. Yeah, Noah Way Babes. Oh, yeah, he, be careful. Whoa, there yeah, I'm not, showing any, <laughs> I'm not showing any of that. Oh. Don't worry. Oh, my goodness. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Jesus. That's a lot. That's, oh, my God. I'm anyway. in. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> if my partner doesn't have a penis. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's and that's all. and that's, that's good that's for it. you. For yeah, you, for me, that's for me. fine. For me. Yeah. For me, yeah. I have other plans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> LGBTQ topics should be taught in school. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, my God. He's going to come up and be like, it should be taught in schools so that everybody knows what, who the gay uh, students are so they can bully them. Oh. Ooh, I'm very <laughs> passionate be, about this one. It should be taught in schools in the negative way. Mm. <laughs> it should be taught in the schools as, as degeneracy. Mm. Let's in the middle. I think age appropriate for sure. Yeah, I exactly. Think it's nuanced. <laughs> it's age and grade. It depends on that. But I mean, there's definitely times growing up when I was in the closet in middle school, I'm like, okay, we're, we're taught men and women, they get together and then they have a baby or whatever, especially like ninth, 10th grade. But like for gay people, something that, just, that doesn't exist. We don't like women. So like, what is my experience? I'm not reading it in a book. I'm not seeing it anywhere. I'm having to run to the dark corners of the internet. I'm having to experience all these things that they shouldn't just be going through. We should be. It's kind of wild that he's like, uh, he he's like a like a prager you guy, and yet this is like a pretty coherent, clear point that he's making here. That is like on the side of the truth teaching something at least but and it goes back to the over sexualization thing it's like when people say are iffy about gay topics being brought up in school it's like oh the sex but it's like no like yeah not reading it in a book because mario banned them all yeah mario <laughs> stayed back mario Wait, stayed back. back no no he didn't come up he to didn't this come one. up yeah oh. he doesn't think they should be taught in school <laughs> and, and he's gonna come up and be like i actually i actually passed banned a bill in nebraska yeah. i actually passed a don't say gay bill in florida <laughs> it, i was very proud of that one right like why can't we learn about wholesome relationships hold them or like you know and just having good credit mara's like it was really difficult for me to do this in florida because like as soon as i went into a parent teachers conference everyone knew i was a homosexual man because i was wearing fucking heels did this guy say we need to teach gay people <laughs> Teach about uh, gay people who have good credit. That's how we normalize homosexuals. Yeah. It's talking about gay people with good credit. God, I, I can't get over Mario. I'm, I'm imagining Mario going into a parent-teacher conference in Florida, and they're like, what's this gay man doing here? Are you a woman? Get the fuck out of here. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm here to ban you know, pornographic books. Like, I promise these are... Get the fuck out of here. They're like calling him a, a, a slurs and shit, misgendering him. <coughs> <laughs> they're trying to, they're trying to fucking hate crime him while he's like no 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 i'm on your side i promise yeah. like yeah. you know <laughs> making good fight. lgbt education how to drive to be fair i'm on that I, i'm i'm advocating for that as well look i was a, I, I rented a pickup truck in nashville and i was a menace i i you oh, should not be allowed and, I, and I, I i i got a parking ticket too they booted my car that's that's good no i'm pissed because i they I tried to type my license plate 
And I came back after dinner, and there was a fucking boot on my car. They tried to they tried to and stop. I had to pay a hundred dollars to get the fucking boot off. Yeah, they tried to stop you from further endangering uh, people in Nashville. Yeah, no, but this is what was crazy, and this is where I was angry for the workers because this this poor girl had to come and this whatever this fucking slimy ass parking enforcement company does is if you don't pay your ticket or if you don't pay or if you don't pay the parking which I did pay for the parking I just mistyped my license plate for the spot they'll come and boot your car and then the employee has to come and unboot the car after the person has just paid a $100 fine okay imagine this these people in Nashville I do. probably drunk half the time have to th- th- this girl who's like 5 foot 4 had to come has to deal with these like crazy pissed off people who had just paid a $100 fine so i i was i was pissed and she, you know what she said to me she said please don't curse me out that's what she said and i was like i'm not going to curse you out i'm not going to curse you out it's not your fault that's what i said i said look people think i'm a Karen. i said it's not your fault I'll deal with it. I'll deal with the. I'll deal with the company. I'm proud of you. That's what I said. I'll deal with the company. I said thank you very much. Have a good night. I'll deal with the company. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fucking dispute that motherfucking charge. I'm not paying that hundred bucks. I'm proud. I paid dude, that hundred bucks. It. I'm getting that hundred dollars back. Do I don't it. give a damn. It's natural. Okay? It's beautiful. I misspell. Financial I mistyped decisions. my license plate. Okay. Okay. People of the same, like just things that are so much bigger. Well, yeah, and that's why I originally was hesitant to step forward because there is a fine line. People are talking about the don't say gay bill or their parental rights and education bill in Florida, which was. This is a good question. How did you rent a vehicle when you're not even 25 yet? Uh, when you have AAA, you can rent one actually at 21. Oh, okay. How old are you? 23. Oh, okay. You're in your early 20s. Yeah, I'm in my early 20s in the state Got of Tennessee. Got it. And the- <laughs> We know you. We know you've lied before to official. Uh, we know you. We know we. Yeah, we know you've lied in official government agency sta- uh, situations before. Um, oh, I got, dude. I got, I, dude. I got, I got searched today at the airport, like an extra bag search, uh-huh. because I had like I keep my jewelry uh-huh. in uh, in the front pocket of my uh, backpack, uh-huh. and it was just a bunch of jewelry, so it set off the TSA like thing. So they searched it, but in also in the front pocket was when I go to the Abbey, I get like two hundred dollars in one dollar bills. So they so they thought you were what like a jewelry dealer? No, they just pulled out like the stack of one hundred dollar bill or dollar one dollar bills, and they're like, "Ooh, somebody had fun." And then I had to explain to her that I go to this bar in West Hollywood called the Abbey, and I was I was telling the I was over explaining. They should they should. Ban homosexuals from travel, <laughs> but I've decided. Yeah, it's up to grade three. It's it's important for kids to know that two <laughs> people. Have they changed that though? Yes. <laughs> Have they changed it since? It goes then? up okay, to twelfth well grade now. Uh, either way, either way. Well, when it was originally up to grade three, that's when I would say I agreed with it, right? Because I don't think that it is a. Will is literally trying to bail to right now in the, in the child group chat, by the way, about sexuality. Now, hear yeah, but me I out. knew this he was in gray area. When Why? Teachers open the discussion. Uh, he, he was going to be busy today. Wait, what? No, he's not. Well, that's not know, what he's I saying. I just wouldn't say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Children about sexuality and inherent sexual attraction, it puts them in a position where they could step on the toes of parents. And that's what I don't agree with. I totally understand where you're going with sexuality. I totally understand uh, what you two said, age appropriate. Um, I think when you're talking about sexuality, that's like sex, that's in terms of like sexual education, sex ed. That's literally what they teach in school. So that, right. those and types of talks. I'm not for that either, which is what the point I was going what? to make. Okay. What? What? I'm a concern. Wait, what are you? Sex, that's in terms of like <laughs> sexual education, sex ed. That's literally what they teach in school. So he does that, those types not of sex talks. either, which is what the point I was going to yeah. make. Okay. I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> they're like, okay, you're fucking crazy. Yeah, he, he's, he's saying no sex ed, uh, even for the straights, <laughs> which, is, which is the OG conservative position, by the way. It's not wrong. That is literally like the major reason as to why there's so many fucking teenage pregnancies happening in red states where they don't do sex ed or a fun little trick uh, that conservatives also pulled in this field is abstinence only sex education. Okay. They literally would turn around and be like, no, 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 we do have sex ed here. It's just abstinence only sex ed. Let me ed. guess, Hassan, that doesn't work. What? 
Abstinence only sex education. No, it, it does not. Because historically, sex is amazing when you're not supposed to do it. Yeah. Like with an X, right? Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's amazing. It's always great when you're like, it's not supposed, you know what I mean? I don't think uh, I'm a conservative who favors small government. I don't think it's the government's place. That's not small government, dog. You're literally, what? To teach anyone's kids about sex. And I know. Okay, you can make that argument about all matter of education. I'm a conservative in favor of small government, which is why I think there shouldn't be any education. There are kids that may need to learn about it because their parents aren't good parents, but I don't think that exception makes the rule. I think and that, that, that's, that's good, good for you. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's oh, yeah, good go. for you, but in just, in, it's taught. With that's the way the world is moving now and the way that the community is just so open and so expressive and the child is going to see regardless. So like he was saying, instead of going to, you know, the dark web or, you know, just looking stuff up on your own and having no guidance, if you're going to teach somebody or if somebody's going to learn it, you rather them learn the correct way. I can totally, totally get down with that too. You want to have parental rights in what you're, they're saying. My whole point is that it has to be all or nothing. We can't keep straight sexuality. I, and I then agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 I don't want, always <laughs> oh, God. Hey, girl. Always, always me. Okay. I'm just kidding. Always me. Oh God, I hate. I just. I hate him so much. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's Megan the Stallion. God damn. Okay, well that's not my fault. It just like showed up on my uh, uh, Twitter feed when I uh, turned on shit. Twitter. Every time I see a Megan the Stallion uh, video that goes viral on my timeline, I'm like, Tory Lanez deserved the death penalty. <laughs> Jesus, wow, that transcends everything. I've always I preconceived. It's like I'm not. I'm anti-capital punishment until I see a Megan The Stallion video and I and I I am reminded of the crimes that this man has committed. Okay, Austin just got ungayed, by the way. Yeah, I, Megan The Stallion just ungayed me. Holy shit! Yeah. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> I'm kind of I was listening in and. Clarkson kind of made the point that the government really shouldn't be in the business of teaching your children about your sexuality. No one taught us how to be gay. Who taught you how to be gay? Anybody? The was internet. it the internet? Okay. Um, uh, it would have. Um, it's not about My teaching own kids to be wait, wait, sexual. Wait, 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 it's, it's equipping wait, them with the tools. Wait, wait, wait. He's saying nobody taught me how to be gay. I was just gay. But like, yeah, if you don't have any representation for, for gay uh, things or gay people in general, like, yeah, it makes it infinitely harder to come to terms with your sexuality because the assumed position is heteronormativity. What the fuck? Your uncle did what? What do you mean? What? Actually, I didn't know he was gay. So it was a family member. Yes, yeah. I didn't know he was so gay. For, but. for me, as a as a gay man um, who grew up with parents who were very, very prudish, they had no idea and they didn't even want to have a conversation. I am those that example that should have been taught at school, but I learned. I figured it out on my own, just like many of us ultimately do. I know as an individual, yeah. it would have helped and it's a me miserable if someone in my own family, an uncle, a parent. For me, I think it's the government's job to start educating these parents because the parents need to have these sensitive conversations with their children. The best metric for a what? child's success is the parental involvement. And what we're doing right now, where we're teaching the children about sexuality and completely not involving the parent, we're leading them down a road for psychological issues because they've got no support system at home. Oh we're my creating. God. I hate this argument. It's like, like he's not even wrong. Yes, like. A Parents should be taught like how to have these conversations with their children, but like, but you can do that while also simultaneously teaching LGBT education in school too. Like, what the fuck? Why are they so weird? All these like gay conservatives are so odd. Like, at least with black conservatives, when they have black conservatives on to talk to like white liberals or whatever the fuck, like the black conservatives, like they operate on uh, a very expected stereotypical boundaries like that you hear from conservatives in general, right? They're they're preaching the same exact conservative uh, uh, talking points. Gay conservatives are on some unique shit where like they're like weirdly tolerant. Like I don't know what the fuck's going on or they they want the same things that like homophobic people want in general, but they want it in like a pro gay way. Like I don't understand what the fuck's going on here. A school system that's supportive and a home system that they think is unsupportive. We live in 2023. Most of the people are very accepting. Parents are understanding, but parents they have are. to know what's going on in their children's lives so that they can be prepared. And I think it's the school's responsibility Bullshit. to prepare those parents not to have children have these conversations with parents because children do not teach their, their parents. How do you get parents involved? when they don't support it though. Like I have a lot of really good friends who are educators and mm -hmm. they want the parents involved. 
but a lot of their parents are coming to school already queer phobic. Right, see, and that's where, that's the challenge. That's the challenge for the schools. That it's not the school's job to overstep that unsupportive parent and then shelter that child because now that child has created a two, two world system where I feel safe here, but I don't feel safe at home. And then the state comes and takes the children, which is happening. How do you feel about waivers? Like, how do you feel about schools saying, oh, we're gonna teach your kid this and the kid comes home with the waiver, like if they sign it, then you're okay with the school teaching it. But if the parent doesn't sign it, then they go to another room and yeah. the parent teaches it. Yeah, Are you absolutely. Cool with something like that? I That's would be like completely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I just keep thinking about it as you say that is I have a friend who Why? Why I, I don't even like the fucking permission slip concept. Like that your 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 school has to get parental supervision and permission to like learn about sex ed. Like fuck you, man. Actually fuck that. I know that it exists, but like, even that's dumb. No, man, you have to learn about it. You want to know why you have to learn about it? Because it's a part of fucking, like, human civilization. Okay? It's so stupid. Sorry, I need a parental permission slip to learn fucking algebra. Like, well, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. The fuck? That, that would not say. work. That's so dumb. Oh, sorry, if you're teaching the theory of evolution, well, that's just a theory, okay? I believe the earth is hollow and only 6,000 years old. You need a permission slip. You need to stop my child from learning about that shit. And it's like, no, dude, shut the fuck up. We want to make sure your kids are not as fucking stupid as you are, okay? Jesus Christ. Um, had a great life at home until his parents found out he was gay. And then they shut him out, shut him out. They kicked him out of the house. They still haven't spoken to him. He's in his late 20s Same. now. And he was unable to get in-state tuition in college because they would not help him fill out the FAFSA, which requires him to have their tax information. And so it, w would it be great to live in a world where, A, it's possible to reach all parents and educate them and change them from being bigoted? Great. Would it be great yep. to be in a place where that is doable? Awesome. But, you know, I was groomed by a teacher, um, and it was only possible because... It was not okay for teachers to talk about being gay, except the yeah. one teacher who went out of his way. Dude, that's dude, that's it. Sex ed also is the first time that like kids who are being like literally sexually abused and and exploited come to terms with that and can recognize it because you know children just don't know, right? Children don't know. So if you like want child exploitation to continue then be against uh sex ed being taught in school and <laughs> maybe that's the reason why many of these fucking QAnon perverts who are actually expressly anti-sex ed being taught in school are sex offenders themselves to make his room a safe space and because he was the only teacher and happened also separately from being open to be a pedophile he was able to groom myself and others and so un unless and until Kids feel like they can be completely safe wherever they are, and knowing that changing parents is kind of an impossible lift, to be frank. Um, not making it mandatory to create safe spaces for LGBTQ kids in schools is begging for disappointment, begging for failure, and to your point about learning about being gay, the, things, the ways that I learned about being gay, especially from the internet, I'm almost 40, there's baggage from that that I still carry with me. 100%. And so if I had been comprehensively educated when I was a kid in school, I would be, my life would be meaningfully different today. I think no, for me the say. easiest thing to look at is like where you have sex education, teen pregnancy goes down, right? Yes. Education is power. I think it would be something similar for queer people. Like if we had information about who we can be and how we can exist mm -hmm. in all these different ways, it would empower kids in a way that they should be empowered. And there wouldn't be billboards for prep everywhere. Monogamous relationships are difficult to find in the gay community. Mm. Damn. I'm step That's forward right. on this one. There you go. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think, think it's difficult that? in today's day and age, and, um, and like I don't just have in any general. Problems with it, but damn, Austin said I got that top shelf dick. Don't even <laughs> matter to me. He said I'm a fucking, I'm a, I'm a service top, is what he's saying over I'm here. I'm a service top. No, you're not. hundred percent. You're, you're a selfish top. You're selfish. Fine. Hey, look, don't. I, I'll, I will put you in contact with a few references. Yeah, you're no, okay. you're, you're selfish. I, I, but I, that's I, what. But I, that's I, the expectation. People next want time that. I'm gonna bring around one of my references. And they're going to tell you exactly. I'll, I'll record it and I'll send it to you. Yeah, bro has a gay resume. Exactly. He's a CV, dude. Yeah. Dick CV. You know, like to find a monogamous relationship. You know, I started with experience at an earlier age. So I'm 22 now. I lost my virginity at 16. Me being 22, I know from all the experience with different partners and just having, you know, I guess my fun, I 
am looking for something with substance, you know? I'm at the age gap where a lot of, you know, people around my age, they want to have their fun. You know, they probably just lost their virginity 18, 19. Some people are losing their virginity now, which is fine, you know what I mean? So they want to experience life or hookup culture. And then there are some people who that's just what they want to do for the rest of their life. They don't want to be tied down. Mm -hmm. So it makes it very difficult because a lot of times even meeting someone, it's one of those things where they want their cake and eat it too. I literally I think, think there's this a is- lot of, go ahead. No, you go first. I was just saying, I do think there's a lot of gay men out there that genuinely look for a monogamous relationship. But I think, you know, as men, I think generally speaking, we sometimes have a desire to be a bit more promiscuous That's and what engage I was in more polyamorous, sort of like, you know, three, <laughs> threesomes, foursomes, swing a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, this is not so much as a gay thing as a man thing, right. 100%. Like, yeah. <coughs> it's, it's very... It's very uh, stereotypical of men to be yeah. uh, interested. Uh, yeah. So I would say I, I would say it's probably a little bit more challenging to find monogamy within the gay community. Yeah, for sure. But like I, but I think you can find monogamy. But I think that even those monogamous relationships uh, bend the rules of traditional monogamy. You know what I mean? I think you find mm-hmm. a lot more gay men that are in monogamous relationships, kind of having you know. Uh, you know, you see it on Grindr all the open-minded time. open-minded yeah. approach. Like, they're not open, but they'll, like, invite a third in. You know what I mean? Like, that mm-hmm. that sort of thing. So, mm-hmm. and and you know what? And I don't think there's anything, there's nothing wrong with it. Every every relationship. It's natural. It's beautiful. It's natural. It's beautiful. Every it's relationship like the top of the hour ad break. Also natural. Yep. Also beautiful. Invite a subscription to your home so you no longer see it, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? At the top of the hour, it's a German mm-hmm. ad break. That's right. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. Why no, not all men with this topic from goons? You can't say that we don't do drug prevention classes because I don't want the government telling my child not to take shrooms. Yeah, they're basically make, they're, they're affirming your argument from earlier. Yeah. Um, not natural, not beautiful, ad break segue. Well, uh, you know, you might have, to, might have to put up with that, okay? In order to naturalize it, though, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or free also, on Twitch Prime. you know what I think we need to normalize a little bit more that I think is still a, a huge problem is like... like um, Frequent or, you know, or, or at least frequent just STD testing of just just even if you don't have any symptoms of anything, you should just go get tested because a lot of these STDs out there are asymptomatic. And I think that one thing that's taught in schools, we see the most dramatic cases of gonorrhea, chlamydia and, and those sorts of things. But one thing that a lot of people don't understand is a lot of these diseases uh, are, are, you know, are, are bacterial infections. They go un unnoticed yeah and and if a lot of people think that you would know if you had it you know what i mean but some of these things are a little you know sneaky so i think you know we we need to we need to advertise more people need to go get tested more frequently respect and as in the gay community specifically get on prep you know take prep uh you know and and also there's something called doxy pep. I don't know if you uh, I was you know t- there's if there's queer people uh, or even straight people you can take uh, I think there's something called doxy pep. If you take two doxycyclines after you have a sexual partner, it's eighty percent prevention for chlamydia and gonorrhea. So just just something that out there if you're looking for extra protection, go go talk to your doctor. Good shit. STDs are beautiful and natural. And they are beautiful and, that, and that's another thing. We shouldn't stigmatize them because, you know, sometimes people get STDs, right? I'm not saying you should, I'm not saying we should normalize it, but I'm just saying, you know, don't. Normalize disease. <laughs> I'm not saying we should but normalize you know, diseases. I think but, there's something you know, to be said about a lot of gay you, men. And again, this is straight people do this too, but we're just talking about gay people that say they want monogamy but they don't actually want it. They just want it for the person they're with. And that's a little shade to my ex, but anyways. Um, <laughs> no, but I think, it, I think it has more to do with the fact that we are very focused on our pleasure a lot in our community. Mm-hmm. And we haven't really learned, not necessarily to repress it, because you shouldn't repress sexual desire, but we haven't really learned how to control it in situations that are particularly hard to do. Like if you're around somebody that you're extremely sexually attracted to, if you haven't you know, taken the time to examine yourself and make sure your actions correlate with the way you want to live, mm-hmm. then you're going to cheat or you're going to need an open relationship because you, you just have no capability of doing anything otherwise. I think 
we're still healing from the generational trauma that came from the AIDS epidemic. You know, I think a lot of people are still trying to figure out how to heal from that. And I do think that we have a big problem with substance abuse, sex addiction, and I think that that needs to be addressed as a community. And I think as we start to look at like why we are leaning into these things that are less productive for us on our like regular lives. I think it's just important when you get into a relationship uh, with somebody to set boundaries as to what you two are comfortable with in terms of how you want to define your relationship. You know, having an, there's nothing wrong with an open relationship or having multiple sexual partners within somebody's relationship or having, or being completely monogamous. There's nothing wrong with any of that. It's just about how, uh, how people want to, uh, what they, what they want to do. There's nothing wrong with anything in, in, uh, on the spectrum, uh, for relationships. And I, I don't think th this guy seems to be, who's this, this guy back here, this guy, seems to be saying that like it's it's wrong to have anything other than monogamous you know what i mean like it's it's not like and it's not wrong for him to want to have a monogamous relationship and i would probably agree with him that it is probably a little bit harder to find monogamy in the gay community um but also like i would challenge the fact that as human beings we're meant to be you know i don't know i don't know if we're even meant to be monogamous you know what i mean are we i don't know i would challenge that because like you know no, no. Some people say yes. Probably not. Nope. Yeah. See, I don't know. I would challenge it. I, I think for me personally, like I, I think eventually I want to be monogamous, but like even my, my relationships in the future will probably include some like sort of version of uh, stretching the traditional definition of monogamy. Like, yes, one partner, we're together, we play together. You know what I mean? Like, we invite a third or a fourth. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I see my future relationship being. Have no capability of doing anything otherwise. I think we're still healing from the you generational I mean? trauma that came from the AIDS epidemic. Or a fifth a lot or a sixth. Do you know what I mean? Make it a party. I do think that we have a big problem with <laughs> substance abuse, sex addiction, and I think that that needs to be addressed as a community. And I think as we start to look at like why we are leaning into these things that are less productive for us on our like regular lives, we can start to realize <laughs> maybe like this is part of that. I think whether it's you know monogamous or non-monogamous, it's a couple's choice to figure out what works best for them. I think we've become very married to the idea of marriage in general, where people are willing to get divorced and remarried and divorced and remarried, where it's like you're not really married to the person, you're married to the monogamy that comes with that marriage. I hear a lot of gays complain about this, but then they're looking on Grindr for a long-term relationship. Um, I don't know how you expect to do that. And who I have talked to, they're looking in the wrong places, it seems like. It seems like there's a need to like have a monogamous relationship. <laughs> this guy and talks a lot about Grinder. But like, <laughs> divorce rates are so high. I wonder if it would be best if people did share each other, not like all the time, but it's like you date Wait, someone, hold on. Go back to maybe you have a and I think that's good because I have one, but like, since divorce rates are so high. I wonder if it would be best if people did share each other, not like all the time, but it's like you date someone, maybe you try something else with someone else. I'm not saying that's the right way. I just don't know because some monogamous relationships no, no, no. work and some don't. I don't know. I think it's... love involves sacrifice, and I think sacrificing your desire for somebody else for the person you're with. Yeah, but love love involves sacrifice. I agree with that, but it also doesn't involve fucking misery. You know what I mean? You shouldn't be miserable in a relationship. Like, I don't understand this idea. I think we're starting to get rid of the idea that we have to be miserable for the sake of monogamy for the rest of our lives. You know what I mean? Like, that's what this guy's advocating for. And look... And for some people, it works. And for some people, monogamy for the rest of their lives, it's not a miserable experience. But for a lot of people, it is, right? Is ultimately what makes your love grow deeper. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for me to see an open relationship <laughs> and think you're not willing to just commit to one person and, and just not be with somebody else. But is that a Christian idea? Is that a heteronormative no, idea? That's no, a, it's just that's an a idea scientific of me. idea. Because as a, as a student of science, the most <sighs> stable bond is a pair bond. Period. Sure. But a pair bond for how long? It yeah. can be forever. I mean, my pair bond, I'm expecting there, it to well, be forever. Is there nuance in that, though? Because there even is. in straight couples, there's like, I mean, you get in the 40s right. and 50s, there's swingers everywhere. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, we did not arrive at monogamy through evolution. It's a combination of some things, and there are benefits to pairing, but there are plenty of mammals in the wild that don't do lifelong pairing. One of the leading drivers of uh, divorce is cheating, and it seems to me taking that off the table is a great way to prevent that one pitfall. Some of the happiest same-sex couples I know are in open relationships, and they make all kinds of other sacrifices for each other, making space for each other in other ways. I think we might be best served by 
surrendering that one of these is right and one of these is wrong there because we put pe each other and ourselves in a position of oh. an expectation of I should want this or I should want that. I should be this. I should be that. And mm -hmm. if that's inconsistent with what best serves us, that's, good. Yeah, that's a recipe base. for a failed relationship regardless of whether amen. or not it's supposed to be. Amen, amen. Uh, you know, I just want to say that I um, really respect and appreciate all of you and I, I oh God. even Except though you Mario. Know, I disagree with vehemently, I, I see a lot of humanity in. And, and I also want to say, um, if I said or did anything that was offensive to anyone, girl, oh, I just want fine. you to know I really do respect the shit out of you guys. Oh God, you guys are all amazing. I'm happy to see our message. You know, even if we don't always agree. Boom. Fuck you, Mario. It's not play time. It's gay time. Okay, it's gay time, not play time. I don't know why she's so fucking riled up today, especially because like I. Literally spent the entire morning like making her run in an open field. She's like, I love you all, uh, except Mario. <laughs> so we said, Austin and Hassan Agreed. kiss the for the gay people. Put your dick away, okay? This is educational. Say, um, all right? Hassan and I are not kissing. Move our community Absolutely. forward. That's really what this is all about. I definitely respect all humans. I just feel like you have a lot of energy and passion that I wish would be used to help move the needle for all of our community. Yeah, the, this guy's not having taken Mario's shit. Okay, somebody somebody said Barrett had uh, some thoughts afterwards. Who's Where's the TikTok for that? And then after that, we'll move on to something more fun, like uh, women rank the attractiveness of men. Ooh, I love that. I'm a gay man because I'm a male with uh, male body parts that likes male body parts. I'm going to play the rest of that clip in a second because this question keeps coming up versus this thing and preferences as always this is for educational purposes and not intended to bully or harass anyone and please don't go send this person any hate they were genuinely asking a question which is not the same case for a lot of other people in the comment section and as always please remember to save and share this as this helps get more eyes and ears on the real important conversations that we are having here thank you love why are you standing up also hi from my backup i have a question for right, you yeah would that change, let's say, if you met someone and you were attracted to them based off of what they looked like in clothes, mm -hmm. and then you found out that their genitalia didn't match what you had expected or assumed, would you still not be interested in them? It would hurt, because I, I would be interested in them. That's happened before. I can't be interested in a person, but at the end of the day, I'm gay. So if I go downstairs and there's nothing there, or there is a female body part, I can't perform. Mm -hmm. So then you wouldn't date a trans man, would you? A trans man is woman transitioning to man. Oh shit! See, it's so confusing. yeah. So it's like you you wouldn't because if they did it's trans man or trans woman, trans man, which is trans woman transition to man. Oh, That's why it's no, trans man. No. Okay. You can yeah. turn around if you. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. So reset. <laughs> We're going to break this down to a few parts because I know a lot of people are confused about this idea of preferences versus this thing, and I. Okay, I thought this was going to be like about. Um, like, uh, extra secret stuff, not the dating trans men part. All right, let's go to the fun one. Wait, is this the one? Oh, this is the follow-up. seeing people with lighter skin tones have opinions on what the world should be like because they don't even realize... Well, isn't that interesting? This video is for educational purposes and not intent to bully or harass anyone. And as always, please remember to save and share as this helps get more eyes and ears on these important conversations. Thank you so much, Love Army. Y'all have been asking me for a while to make a video on that specific person and a few of the others that are profiled in the video that I am stitched with for this. To be quite frank, it didn't feel like I really need to make a video on these people because a lot of people ratio the people that I'm talking about quite frequently. However, the time has come. I'm a part of a middle ground conversation that aired yesterday and myself and the person that you just saw in the beginning of this are both in that. I've now been told that he has gone on to make a video addressing me on his own profile. I have him blocked. He's not safe space. I don't want to hear what he has to say. I don't really care what he has to say about me in that video. In my opinion, there is no argument or debate around human identities, period. And I have a feeling he will see this, so I want to say this. It's really sad for me to watch someone actively say that they don't believe in things that they know would have helped them as a child, because that's not you showing up and being the person you needed to be for your younger self which is sad. Also, for the record, I took it easy on these people because I knew other people in the conversation were going to point out the hypocrisies that are very present. Ultimately, what this boils down to is that there is no place for hate in this love army and that when we hear any kind of bigotry, we stand against it. If you're new here and believe in equality for all humans, then welcome. Nice.
Thank you.